We meet again at Silverstone, back where it all began for Formula One and in the air. An anticipation like no other, because there are races which evoke greater emotion, where the circuit inspires and history demands a performance. This is one of them. Whether it's your first, second, or you've seen them all, good afternoon and welcome to the British Grand Prix. Here is one of the best circuits anywhere on the planet. 3.66 miles, the traditional three sectors, the two DRS zones, which we hope are going to get plenty of overtaking action all the way through. Not much in the way of elevation. That's about the only thing this place is missing. 18 turns, all with motor racing memories everywhere you look. And here's one that you might have forgotten. Perez versus Raikkonen from last year. Not the thing we remember at those corners from one year ago, but he was trying to recover through the field after a difficult time in qualifying. Here's what we remember from one year ago, one of the more extraordinary opening laps in the entire history of the sport, ending at that moment with a huge impact, over 50 G for Max Verstappen as he hit the wall. And this was Lando Norris uh, versus, uh, versus Fernando Alonso into Vale, the final few corners into club, the last of the 18 around this venue. Here are the tires the soft, the medium and the hard, but specifically the C3, the C2 and the C1, we might as well need the inter and the wet. It's the hardest compounds in the allocation from Pirelli, but let's take you through the grid for the 10th Grand Prix of the year then. Lance Stroll is usually very strong in the wet, but he's right at the back of the field. It's 19th for Mick Schumacher, who had a steering issue in qualifying. Sebastian Vettel lines up in 18th on his 35th birthday. Magnussen is one place ahead of him. Alex Albon was fuming with team tactics, which saw him crash out in Q1. Ocon lines up ahead in 15th. And then it is Daniel Ricciardo, who's been on the podium here before, but can only manage 14th yesterday. And Yuki Tsunoda is chasing his first points in Spain. Valtteri Bottas, it's his lowest start here since 2014, but he was on the podium that day. He's next to Pierre Gasly. Then it's Nicholas Latifi having the qualifying performance of his year so far. Next to Guan Yu Zhou, who's the lead alpha for the third race in a row. Then it's George Russell in eighth and Fernando Alonso starting where he did last year in seventh. Lando Norris is next to Lewis Hamilton. This is his lowest starting position at Silverstone since he won here in 2014. Sergio Perez cracks the top four for the first time in his Formula One career at this venue. Then it's Charles Leclerc in third. And on the front row, Max Verstappen chasing his first British Grand Prix victory and Carlos signs who celebrates his first uh, pole position in his 150th start phenomenal stuff for him but look at the intensity it's one thing to get a pole but he wants that victory here's the man who is most likely to stop him alongside max verstappen will be looking to equal jackie stewart's record well it's the formula one world championships original race and it's ready to add another chapter to silverstone's fabled history the British Grand Prix of 2022 is next. Welcome back to the British Grand Prix from Silverstone Circuit. It is 3 p.m. and the time has come for one of Formula One's undisputed classics. We are live on Channel 4 as the 20 cars eventually make their way from the dummy grid to the formation lap. And Nicholas Latifi made his first Q3 start of the entire season. He hadn't even got out of the first part of qualifying until yesterday. Took advantage of the conditions that we have, but right now... Silverstone Circuit is available in bone dry. 20% chance of rain for this one as Carlos Sainz chases his first win. But there's a big decision to be made on the pit wall. Do you go for a two-stop or do you go for a one-stop strategy? That is going to be key. That is going to be defining 
for who wins this race, David Coulthard. Yeah, and you just mentioned Nicholas Satifi there. I'm pretty sure I saw him go off the grid on the soft tyres. Yeah, so that's going to suggest it. You expect to see him doing two stops this afternoon. Verstappen as well on that soft tyre, looking to try and get the jump off the line. So this is going to be... That suggests to me that Red Bull are going all in to give Verstappen a chance to clear Carlos Sainz as quickly as possible. So fascinating that they have decided to put Sainz on the medium and look for that launch. What the soft tyre gives you, a few metres off the line, and it's a short run down to the first turn of this racetrack. So there's not too far to fight there. Max Verstappen is the championship leader. Red Bull are the constructors' championship leaders as we go into this one. Red Bull have won the last six races in a row. If we look at the hangar straight, it is a typical Silverstone day. Track temperature is 28 degrees, but air temperature is 18 with that chance of rain. And of course, the grandstands absolutely rammed. Looking for a view of this. Look at the attendance. The largest ever crowd in this place's storied history, Mark. That's a lot of burgers, mate. <laughs> there is a lot of burgers out there. Uh, the atmosphere is electric on the grid. I've just uh, made my way back up to the commentary box. and uh, Interesting, Verstappen has gone for the soft tyre off the line. I think that's going to be also a bit of an intimidating move for, uh, uh, for Carlos Sainz and against Ferrari, as DC just mentioned. They mean business as he does his wheel spin right in front of us here across the commentary box. They're looking to get that slightly you know, subpar tyre out of the way, Red Bull. Um, and create the pressure early in the race. They're lined up on the front row. They're being joined further back right now. You see Lando Norris taking his spot in the McLaren. We've got cars out of position because it was a wet qualifying. It is a dry race. It is one that they are all desperate to win, but none more so than Carlos Sainz, who chases victory in his 150th Formula One Grand Prix for the very first time. Lance Stroll will be the last car into position, everyone looking to the grid in a few moments time we'll be looking to the lights 20th car in position is an aston martin stirring moments here we go green flag at the back means it's time to go racing three four five red lights at silverstone and the british grand prix is go max verstappen's got a good reaction time and that soft tire choice has worked max verstappen takes the lead of the british grand prix then it signs and look lewis hamilton's up and a big Whoa. big crash car upside down into the wall that is not what we wanted to see at all and there are multiple cars off the road and that will be at the very least a safety car it will be a red flag yeah. it is a red flag immediately serious accident at the first turn at Silverstone. yeah only a decision that can be made when uh, we as we saw the car disappear out of the back of shot upside down and that is george russell there so and another car ahead of him so we've lost a few cars in this red flag moment and uh, we have a few nervous moments until and there's obviously been contact with the left rear of George Russell. So who is he around as George goes towards the car? He wants to check on the driver that he's had contact with. It's Yuki Tsunoda involved in that as well. I we believe there was a car upside down going through the gravel. Uh, it seemed on first glance, but we'll confirm it. You can see that Alexander Albon's involved in that. We believe that Joe Guan Yu is involved in that as well. Lewis Hamilton had gained a position, he'd moved up to third. So Russell finds himself out of the car and the driver who had scored points all the way through this season will not extend that record. That is further down, Alexander Albon, we said, is there. But we believe the car that was upside down at the first turn is Joe Guan Yu. But you can see there the drivers involved. So Sonoda's still trying to make his way round. He can try and fix that damage. And for the second year in a row, we've had a red flag on the opening lap at Silverstone. Yeah, well, obviously it remains to be seen as we, we wait to get confirmation that all the drivers are, are OK. But what is a little bit strange about this uh, situation is that it's a very open turn one. Absolutely flat when you're on your own. Clearly at the start of a Grand Prix, you're going to be going side by side. But it's not a corner that you would classically expect to see contact. No, not at all, DC. I just think that, you know, I'm not a gambling man, but I think that, um, yeah, that uh, Esteban Ocon's day will be done as well there with the damage to that front right. But I think it, we, we could see a bit of a, just a, a sandwich moment here, just a sandwich moment into, into the first corner. They're trying to funnel through that corner, which is very quick, of course. 
um, you know, George Russell did go to the car that went out of shot uh, upside down at quite high speed. Uh, and as the cars funnel through the pit lane here and stay away from that incident, which is on the run to turn one. So, yeah, I think it was, you know, it just got probably got crowded there. There was contact and just must have, of course, flipped the car. We don't quite know who that is yet, but obviously flipped him completely straight over and he was on his roll hoop through the gravel. Okay, so, so go on, then. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say, so uh, clearly now the teams go about the business of uh, collecting those cars at the end of the pit lane. They can change tyres um, once FIA allow them to go about those procedures. So this effectively makes it a complete... Uh, fresh restart by the time they, they go around um, and we will we'll see a quick start and well I'm not sure having got that car back to the pits it will be able to take any further part of the Grand Prix the front wheel not rotating because it's sitting on top of the front wing but uh, you've got to imagine there could be some suspension damage so we can confirm that it is Joe Guan Yu, the driver who has been the lead Alfa Romeo on the grid for three races in a row, the rookie driver who has really had top performance in the last few races, a winner here in Formula 2, a winner here in Formula 1, but we are awaiting an official update at this moment in time. As Lewis Hamilton is out of the car, he had moved up to third position as sticking with it, Esteban Ocon. The Alpine is uh, making its way uh, back. He's done and dusted. He just doesn't want to walk back to the pits. He's just driving his way back. Uh, yeah, steering arm's broken. Yeah, it's gone. Looks like a motorbike tire on that front right, doesn't it? But uh, anyway, Hamilton's made some spots and Alonso. Uh, two of the experienced dogs got that first sector right because they're all jostling for positions. Um, so George is back in his car. Yeah, he looks like he's either wanting to communicate with the team yeah. and or drive that car. Uh, back but with uh, left rear damage and I can't imagine he'd be able to get any drive at all out of it that's right and so we're not showing you any replays until we've confirmed what has happened at turn one a big accident not what we want to see at all this is a celebration of motor racing it is a festival atmosphere all the way around but we have a red flag if you've just switched on mate Lovely to have your company, but a serious, serious incident at, uh, at turn one uh, for them not to be showing you the replays at this time. But we'll await an official update. Now, Verstappen got the lead in the opening meters of the race, so they went for the soft tyre, gambled on that. They can now get rid of that soft tyre. You can do anything you want in terms of changing things. There is no restrictions here, so it is effectively a... Uh, effectively mark a free pit stop for anyone now change what you like there's some here trying to stay in the race there's some now thinking about the strategy at the start that's right yep you uh like alpine might try and fix the front right of esteban's car uh they got a mission on there it's pretty detailed inside those great front brake duck areas here's uh max verstappen back in the garage talking to his father uh and this is what's fascinating about drivers you know we, when you're a, he's a star of the grid he's leading the race at turn one and you just do not know what's happened he's asking questions what what happened? Obviously talking to a very experienced campaigner there too and his father. Talking of experienced campaigners, there's Fernando Alonso had a very good start. Uh, he's moved up a few posies already. And, um, yep, so, you know, this is a, a tricky time for drivers. Uh, you know, it's it's the experienced guys have been through this a little bit. Uh, there's uh, Mick Schumacher, who's pretty concerned as well. Um, so, yeah, it's... Well, you've, you've been through this, guys, where you've seen a big accident on track how hard is it to keep your mindset at the job in hand about the 90 minutes of racing that they know will come down yeah well certainly in my experience and we'll hear from mark but you of course you're you're concerned that your colleague your competitor is uh, is going to be extracted safely uh, and with no injury but you're also a racer and you're thinking this will restart what is it that I need to, to do personally to make sure that I make the best proper uh, proper restart? So, you know, the cars today are, are, are incredibly robust, you know, uh, very stringent crash testing. We've got the halo there, which undoubtedly offers greater protection for the driver in that actual situation, Mark. Yep, absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I think that, I mean, I always try to remain as positive as possible, Alex. I think that, you know, if you weren't involved in an incident, obviously, you, of course, you're, you're hoping for the best. Um, and uh, that's always the case. And then, of course, the, the, the racer comes back in you. You know, you've got, to, you've got to represent your team. You've got a job to do. You've got to go back out there and, and um, you know, get that tunnel focus vision back on to, to deliver what is absolutely crucial for the, for the team on the day. So, uh, yep, it's a, it's a bump in the road, Team Rodeo, Valtteri. Um, yeah, so I picked up some debris on the way, so just when I come back, okay. have a look. Yeah, we'll check in a bit then. Does this mean we start again? V2, I guess. We are asking. Exit of turn three. Uh, I mean, I was in side by side, and obviously, uh, Louis just did like if I was not there, so uh, I hope they are looking into that. So hearing what the drivers have to say about the first incident, I can tell you that uh, Joe Guan Yu uh, remains at turn one in the car. The medical team, Dr. Ian Roberts, one of the absolute best in the business, uh, is down there. And uh, we await further updates from the FIA, from Formula One, after a big and serious accident on the first corner of the first lap uh, if you miss the start we are uh, seeing uh, in the first meters Max Verstappen getting the lead of the race using that sticky soft rubber to get past Carlos Sainz Lewis Hamilton getting past Charles Leclerc Charles Leclerc are uh, very uh, Leclerc and Hamilton very close by into that first turn and uh, Hamilton getting by, he promised to be aggressive, and he was. Um, further back, uh, George Russell and Alex Albon are uh, out of the race as well. But we have a suspended race at this stage as Dr. Ian Roberts and the medical team attend to the Chinese driver in his rookie season, third place in Formula 2 last year, Zhou Guan Yu. And let's have a look then at the start on board with Max Verstappen. Yep, here he goes uh, on the right-hand side. He launched, and we've seen that happen quite a few times here. The right-hand side does launch well. He's on a different compound, of course, and that is absolutely regulation through turn one for him. And um, over to the left-hand side for the brakes. Here's Lewis Hamilton. This will be interesting. Where does he go? Through the middle. Through the middle. That is beautiful. Thread the needle right there. And uh, that was a nice one, DC, wasn't it? He'd be stoked with that P P3 early doors here today. Yeah, well, if I understood the radio message that was played out as we go on board with Perez, it was like um, Charles Leclerc was trying to suggest that Lewis had moved as if he wasn't there, but that, that to me looks absolutely fine. So it may be something thought that I was turn three as Perez loses that place there to Alonso and then launches it down the inside. And yeah, you can see them, Ferrari and the Mercedes getting up and personal. But yeah, Lewis Hamilton out of the traps like... Uh, is it, is it the, the Greyhound or the Hare? Is it Lonzo there? Takes that wide line. He called it before on the grid, didn't he, Mark? He did. He did. Okay, I'm just hearing in my ear an update uh, from Formula One that, and this is the most important news, that Joe Guan Yu is moving. He's on a stretcher. He's been extracted from the car, and they're the heaviest cars that they've ever been. Um, it is... It is very, very serious when a car goes upside down, though, and uh, that is, of course, not how they are designed to absorb the impact, and it would have been a sizable impact to have this uh, be red flag for as long as this. Yeah, indeed, and we, uh, we, of course, all wait for more positive news on that as we saw George Russell down, back at, down at Turn 1, negotiating with the Marshalls trying to get the car back into the pit lane so they can work on it. Yep, I think you're right, DC. Once that uh, recovery truck normally on the uh, M40 here, but uh, it's uh, it's trackside and they want that to uh, get uh, Lewis's car back down to the garage somehow and, and he doesn't think there's too much damage on the car. The left rear's gone obviously, but uh, fresh rear tyre and he might be able to restart this race, but um, he should never give up because there could be some barrier damage down there. This could be, you know, it might take a while, so you might as well keep swinging while you can. Ron Pablo Montoya. He was on pole position for this race in 2002 and won it in 2005. 
A big round of applause from the crowd there. The red flag is out after a serious incident at turn one. The extraction team are attending to Joe Guan Yu. We will wait to bring you official word as soon as we have it on the condition of the Chinese driver competing in his 10th Formula One Grand Prix today. And just to underline, no uh, official word at this stage, but the extraction team have removed him from the car. That is the latest update that we have as we look around this circuit that will be keeping their thoughts on the racing to come ahead. But this is not how anyone wanted to start the British Grand Prix of 2022. And tense moments for tense moments for the drivers at this stage as they wait for word. Uh, there's a three-hour window to complete the entire Grand Prix. And the clock did start, so we are into that three-hour window that we must complete the race. And the Mercedes of George Russell. You can see the new regulations compared to what we had last year. It was designed to clear up the aero, but one of the reasons that they are so heavy is the addition of the halo, the addition of the anti-intrusion panels at the side. They're the heaviest ever version of a modern Formula One car. So it is uh, very much, yeah, very much a uh, big beast these days, uh, but it is designed to protect the driver. That's right, mate. Yeah, it's uh, about 900 kilos off the line. Uh, George is talking to... Joe Bauer there from the FIA, and I don't think their body language is too great um, because Joe is explaining to him that um, I think your day's done, son, and uh, George wants to get racing. So um, yeah, they're uh, they're agreeing to disagree, and uh, it looks like he's uh, got an early shower today. But looks at the body language of the FIA, he's a very experienced campaigner, and he knows his rulebook inside out. So. Uh, tough one for George, but I tell you what, for the people at home, uh, we've got a bit of a delay here, but Lewis Hamilton, he could do something special today. Uh, and he's got a good race car. It's still gusty. There's a bit of rain around, and that's Hamilton territory. Very much so, Pete Bonington. You always hear Pete Bonington on the radio. He shouted, get in there, Lewis, plenty of times for victories, but not this season. Hamilton immediately getting up to the top three. Hamilton hasn't led... Uh, at any points at, at this season. But George Russell has led all the laps for Mercedes. Uh, I can hear an update that uh, they are trying to deal with the car at turn one. I can give you an update, and this is as far as the update goes at this moment in time, that Joe Guan Yu has been extracted from the car, and we await further news. So uh, the clock paused in the opening 20 seconds of the Grand Prix. A Grand Prix that Lewis Hamilton improved his position up to third. Uh, Carlos Sainz from pole position, first time he's achieved that, held on to it for the opening meters. Fernando Alonso, always a mighty starter around here, up a couple of places. Uh, Sergio Perez down two, uh, Lando Norris uh, down one, Nicholas Latifi looking to return to the points for the first time this season, and uh, Valtteri Bottas gaining along with Ricardo. Uh, the retirements. Uh, that we can tell you the condition of at the moment. George Russell and Alexander Alban and a serious accident for Joe Guan Yu, which is why we won't show it to you until this is the protocol. We will not show a replay of that until we know the exact condition of Joe Guan Yu. This is when you see the best guys in the business, DC, so don't you? The best mechanics. Uh, it's so fiddly. It's not quite a a watch or sort of the mechanics of inside a watch but there's nearly a jewelry factor of actually how delicate to rebuild these cars under pressure as quick as you can make sure there's no errors or mistakes um there they are look there's plenty of plenty of chefs in there having a crack at trying to fix that for esteban to get him back out there looking at any issues with the parts there and there's nicholas latifi he's p8 at the moment he uh, survived that first sector uh issue uh, the other rivals there and uh, so he's still in the race well and truly he, could he have something uh, special today our friends and colleagues down at sky sports are reporting that uh, joe guanyu was conscious throughout and has been extracted from the car 
Uh, that is the word that we have at this moment. We're going to play it by the book, though. We're going to give you the updates when we have it, but the accident would have been extremely, extremely severe for us to hold off on the uh, replays for this amount of time. That's understandable, though. The red flag is out. There will have to be attention, but our concerns at the moment are of the conditions that Joe Guan Yu finds himself in. He was racing along with this man in Formula 2. Mick Schumacher, the champion of that series back in 2022. And then last year, Joe Guan Yu taking third place in the, the championship on the way up. And he has really impressed the team down there at Alfa Romeo, certainly in the last few races. So that's absolutely vital. Daniel Ricciardo benefiting from Clash down at the first turn, and he could really, really use uh, things turning around. And the FIA have just advised that there was an incident at the start of the race. Emergency crews were immediately into attendance, and the drivers of car 23, that's Alex Albon, and car 24, that's Joe Guan Yu, have been taken to the medical center. Both drivers were conscious and will be evaluated at the medical center. So that an official update from the FIA and the news that we were at this stage hoping for an, a nasty, nasty incident at turn one. You never want to see a car upside down at that point. That is the latest update though, that uh, Joe Guan Yu uh, conscious and being evaluated at the medical center. And uh, Alex Alban also being uh, sometimes that's precautionary but obviously our thoughts with Joe Guan Yu at this moment in time and uh, as a result everyone waiting for the procedure there'll be a signal that we're that we would uh, have there's a procedure a 10 minute warning a five minute warning uh, if they're going to have this restart for Stappen, Sainz, Hamilton, Leclerc and Alonso hard to keep yourself in that focus okay the opening meters didn't go to plan but we will at the discretion of the race director have a standing start and that you can see with Sainz's reaction time uh, faster than Verstappen all about that strategic choice from Red Bull yep yeah, that's right mate. look so yeah. you see yeah. Go on, you go, son. yeah the um yeah the reaction times nip and tuck but just the grip that was available from that inside line where the uh, start finish straight is here then uh, of course you, you get a slightly cleaner side on the left but no rubber down at all so there's no sort of uh, rubber advantage if you like not a lot of rubber on the start anyway so it was all about the start wasn't it for it Max? was not yep the drive phase acceleration phase he had ju the job done uh, by the time he got to turn one but, um everyone's going to reset now get their minds into gear for another standing start all the components will be able to handle that. Uh, these cars are, of course, on the limit in terms of having just to do the job they need to do, but they can do lots of starts and uh, won't be nervous about the machinery being able to handle this. It's uh, all part of the tech and, and uh, the re redundancy they need to have in the, in the performance envelope. And there's uh, Charles Leclerc just uh, chilling out. He's asking his engineer what he needs to do. This is where we get to the... They've got to hold our hands through this, uh, Alex. As a driver, you're like, "What do I do now? What do I do now?" And, and, and look at Joe Bauer from the FIA. He's the, he's he's the ringleader now, telling the engineers, and then the engineers tell the drivers. And there's a lot of um, you know fine print here in the regulations that needs to be adhered to. So uh, that's uh, can always be a bit tricky, mate. What we would have been able to bring you uh, earlier last year, for example, was the team managers speaking to race control, getting clarification. That's going on right now. Now that communications channel, because of Abu Dhabi and all that, has been scrapped for this year, but those conversations are going on. And this is where a team manager really comes into their own, because if they're calm, so is the rest of the operation. Absolutely, mate. You know, we've got a lot of experienced guys uh, here running the, the, the technical and the sporting side for exactly this scenario. This is an absolute minefield of regulations here in terms of uh, how this would work and make sure you don't break any regulations uh, because there's a lot of people now involved in this restart and, and, and engineers and mechanics and you know, start technicians and all sorts of people and people moving equipment around pit lane and etc etc so yep it's uh it's you know knocks a few cobwebs out of the, of the uh the sporting director or the team manager uh whatever they like to call them and here's the first vision that we've seen of of the alfa romeo down at the scene of turn one 
Looks like they've got the car the right side up. Whether it finished like that, we're not sure. OK, we can go downstairs to Christian Horner. Uh, Christian, first of all, not the start that anyone wanted to see with that crash at Turn 1. What's the latest news that you have heard? No, but thank goodness we're hearing that uh, all the drivers sound OK. I heard that uh, Zoo is on the way to... Uh, uh, the uh, medical center so uh, you know, thankfully what looked like a horrible accident uh, the, these cars have stood up remarkably well the race start that we are just seeing a replay of why did you decide to go for the for the uh, red wall Pirelli tire that got you the lead of this race well, I think you just answered that question didn't you? <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah it was a great start by Max I don't think that was all just the tire so uh, that was a horrible accident um, that really so, was. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Christian, we're just going to cover it for everyone um, at the moment because he's in the middle of the pack and he is instantly being flipped over. The halo has done an extraordinary job there into the gravel and then flipped over the tyre wall into the catch fencing. No car is ever meant to end up there. That is a horrible, horrible accident. Uh, Christian, you used to race before you were a team boss in Formula One. That is, uh, that's terrifying stuff. I mean, can you imagine he's doing well over 120, 130 mile an hour at that point. He's going upside down. Uh, thank goodness for the halo, because it has absolutely saved his life today. And, uh, and then to end up over the fence as well. I mean, uh, that must have just been terrifying. Christian, thank you for speaking to us at this stage of the race. We're going to deal with uh, the crash from the uh, view of Pierre Gazzi at this moment in time and you just see the pincer that's one of the most violent accidents I've ever seen and the fact that Joe Guan Yu is conscious after escaping the circuit is a huge relief it is indeed and uh, you know Mark and I have had a fair share of sizable crashes and you know obviously we, we wait for the full uh, confirmation that he's okay um, but I would, I'd like to just reassure people at home that a lot of the time a moving accident like that is low energy for the driver in the cockpit. You know, it's a sudden stop that is uh, very uncomfortable. So although he has uh, climbed over the barrier there, at, at no point did that look like there was anything that came into the cockpit area. So um, it's it, what I'm, tr I'm basically trying to say is it's not as violent in the car as it looks from the outside. There's Alex Albon being sent into the pit wall and those multiple hits would have set off the G light uh, which is why he is also at the medical center for a mandatory check. This is what it looked like from Yuki Tsunoda's point of view. A horrible accident in the opening meters of the British Grand Prix. You see the Alfa Romeo flipping over and the fact that Joe Guan Yu escaped the circuit there. No, just absolutely horrible to watch in the opening meters. This is what it looked like on board with Esteban Ocon, who was caught up in it as well. He was an innocent bystander he gets nailed from the Williams from the right wait for it bang there it is so he got drilled by that and and DC you're right I mean yeah, for the viewers at home it was a very nasty looking crash uh, but the, the Alfa Romeo didn't have any big well, this would be an interesting angle here look at it goes through there the gravel trips it up actually the gravel then tripped him over and got him airborne over that uh, tire barrier there which flicked him over the back of the wall so that is very very unusual for us these days to see a car as you say Alex sort of you know, technically lead the circuit but um let's hear from Bottas. so um they are told driver is okay um just informed the message from race control so joe is okay thanks yeah that is the most important thing by far it's brought a huge cheer from the crowd because they heard that message as well and after a horribly violent accident at the first turn joe guan yu has been extracted from the car and the message to his teammate is that he's okay that's the message that we were desperately desperately hoping for and now the Alfa Romeo driver of Valtteri Bottas can focus at the task in hand so a reminder of everything that took place in the opening meters of the race Max Verstappen took the lead from Carlos Sainz and then Lewis Hamilton toughed it out with Charles Leclerc to improve his position. Fernando Alonso getting past Perez means that Perez will have work to do. And then obviously behind, really, really scary accident. And there will be, I imagine, a review at the, at the runoff at Turn 1 after seeing the car escape the bounds of this historic circuit. But crucially, the halo that was added a few years ago 
has protected initially from being upside down and then the modern standards of Formula One, the safety that doesn't happen by accident. A lot of people made themselves very unpopular in the 70s where they put their hand up and said this needs to change. It's been a long, long evolving journey to not accept that what we have now is good enough, that it constantly needs to improve and that improvement in safety has meant that Zhou Guan Yu, the Chinese driver, was uh, starting in the top 10 the second time in his Formula One career where he's being evaluated at the medical center, but he was conscious throughout after a horrible crash to start the British Grand Prix. But crucially, the official word that he is conscious and the evaluation going on at this moment in time. So that is going to be very, very interesting. Let's go downstairs to the paddock then for a reaction from uh, Lee McKenzie, who is with Billy Munger and Eddie Jordan. Thanks very much. Yeah, really difficult, difficult times. We came down to the paddock. Actually, we were watching this in the paddock outside um, Alfa Romeo. Uh, understandably, a lot of upset people in there. Um, just the emotions hugely high. Um, great news finding out that there's an FIA statement saying that both uh, Joe Guanzhou and, interestingly, Alex Albon are both conscious, have been taken to the medical center. Five cars involved in that melee at the start. Esteban Ocon, George Russell, Joe and Alex. Um, George Russell obviously as well. But we saw Joe's family being led from the back of the Alfa Romeo garage across the paddock into the top level of Alfa Romeo, sitting alongside Graham Loudon who manages them. Mark Hines has gone to the medical center. Um, Eddie, it's, it's just terrifying no, to see something like that. And when you see the replay of the car over the barrier, Look, uh, I've seen that uh, in Imola in 94 with Ruben Sparrichello. It is the most frightening thing you can ever wish to see. It's, it's absolutely shocking. Um, there's no other words uh, to account for it. It's just one of those things that drains everything out of your body. You just hope and wish for the safety of all of the competitors. Billy, when we saw the replays, I mean, a, gra a gravel trap is there to basically get the tyres to dig deep down into it, but I suppose it's... <laughs> It's not tried, it's not tested, a halo's never going to grip into it, so it only works when the car is the right way up. Yeah, the whole point of a gravel trap is to slow the car down by, like you said, Lee, it's meant to be, obviously, on all four tyres. When Guan Yu Zhou got flipped upside down and into that gravel trap, that halo system that obviously was doing a majorly important job in protecting the driver in the cockpit and in, from a head and safety point of view, but also didn't take much speed off the car and that's why it's the car sort of dug into the gravel but whilst it was barrel rolling over to the barrier. AJ you have spent your entire life working with racing drivers looking at these pictures I'm always intrigued to see how different drivers approach a situation like this because they will have to get back into their cars they will have to race the great news is that you know at this moment we know that Joe is, is conscious and in the medical centre getting the best possible care but we've got some drivers staying in the car we had that sort of picture of Fernando Alonso staring ahead Kevin Magnussen walking around every driver deals with this differently but it's not easy for, for some people watching at home they'd be astonished to see drivers jumping back into the cars and starting this race all over again but first of all you know in a situation like this everybody has their own mechanism within their own framework, within their own body, how to deal with this kind of thing in the mind because it's not something you prepare yourself for. This was shocking and each and every driver out there is thinking, oh my God, thank God it wasn't me, but nevertheless, we have to think of our competitors. And uh, irrespective of how aggressive people are in their racing format, this is forgotten. This is something that is important, that you have sportsmanship, you have people coming together in times of, of adversity. And uh, I'm pleased to see that every driver is doing their own thing. And a lot of these drivers are great friends, Billy. Yeah, they're, they're definitely the atmosphere in the paddock. Once the helmet comes off and you're not out on track competing hard against each other, these drivers travel the world with each other and this is their lives are dedicated to this sport. So they're all very close to each other, away from the, being on circuit and competing. and. Uh, yeah, they'll all be struggling with, with this at the moment, and it's going to be really tough to readjust and reset going into the race when it eventually gets restarted. I mean, that's something that the drivers have to deal with. Uh, they are athletes, but they're, they're individuals, they're humans, and the human side of things right now is tough because that was a horrific crash. Eddie, as a team boss, what would you be saying to a driver in this situation, or would you be leaving them to their own devices? You must leave them to them. You know, they, they are 
themselves. There's very few words being spoken, and I think that's the right thing to do. You just let the situation happen. Everyone has a different way of coping with it, um, but the really top ones are trying to push it to one side. You can never totally push it to something because they are human, as Billy has just said, and that emotion comes through. Nevertheless, they are here and being paid to race. They've got over 140,000 fans here as well, but the safety of the drivers is paramount. And once we know, and we've now been told that they're up and well, well-ish, and they're at, a, 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 at the medical centre. So I think we will have a race here within half an hour or so. Yeah, just to reiterate, if you're just joining us, we have had a pretty horrendous accident at the start of the British Grand Prix. Uh, Zhou Guangzhou was flipped over. He, his car, his Alfa Romeo, actually ended up over the barriers. Five other, uh, four other cars involved, five cars in total. Um, Billy, we know that Joe is in the medical centre at the moment, but actually we sat together and watched all the various onboard cameras before we actually saw the crash played out in full a few minutes ago. It, we must talk about the testament, uh, test, play testament to the, the safety of these cars, that the fact that, you know, five drivers essentially have walked away or been taken to a medical centre. Well, that, that's the health and safety of the drivers is paramount and as much as we love the sport and most sport is that a dangerous sport and you're going at these incredibly high speeds so things can happen uh, when the adrenaline is running high in these incredibly fast motor vehicles but it's, it's great to see that the drivers all came away from that in a relatively unscathed position obviously with a couple of drivers at the medical centre uh, and yeah it's uh, it's a testament to how we're always pushing safety first and that's a uh, the big thing that hopefully comes out of today's incident. They'll learn from even the crash we've seen today with the halo and how it affects itself with the, the gravel trap and the car being upside down. They will learn things from this. Just something else to add to that. Um, we talked about the safety of cars and the introduction of carbon composite to make it so much resilient. I mean, these cars are amazing what they're able to withstand. But spare a thought for Silverstone. You know, that car went through the gravel track. It hit the guardrail. It flipped the guardrail. In years gone by, that car would have been in the crowd. And we have no idea what kind of destruction that could have caused. However, the guardrail and the safety net around Silverstone, full marks to them for making sure that this place is a safe place, not just for the drivers, but for the fans. And Billy, we just saw a shot there of Carlos Sainz sitting in the uh, car. He, of course, started his first ever Grand Prix on pole position. Um, we will wait down here in the paddock, try and find out some more information and deliver that to you when we can. But Alex, back to you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, we're taking another look at the horrendous accident that started the British Grand Prix. That is Joe Guan Yu bouncing through the gravel and beyond the realms of the circuit, beyond the safety required line. We're on board with Kevin Magnussen. This is an angle that we haven't shown you so far. That is Alex Alban. It's going to get hit a couple of times again. So he is in the medical center as well, going through precautionary checks as Kevin Magnussen improved his position up to fifth. The sporting regulation says, in all cases, the order will be taken at the last point at which it was possible to determine the position of all the cars. Well, we only had 21 seconds of the Grand Prix from lights out. And as a result, we believe the restart order will be in grid order when we get to the restart. On board with Joe Guan Yu. And that is real time. This is a real time replay of what it looks like to have an absolutely horrible, horrible experience. Uh, guys, you've both had big accidents. We're on board Pierre Gasly to see it again. Mark, you only had big accidents in, yeah. in, in your career. Yeah, I never scratched cars, mate. I didn't scratch them at all, I destroyed them. Um, and yeah, it's God, what I think happened here today, DC, with that there was a lot of discrepancy between all the starts, wasn't there? And there was a lot of guy as he comes left of screen there and exits out the right. But I think we had so many guys making good starts and some average starts to go on board with Seb. The other thing as well, Mark, yeah. sorry to jump in, but because you expect that to flow as a corner, no one's getting ready to, to anticipate uh, braking or anything. So no. suddenly when cars are banging off walls, it's like, whoa, cannot compute. Yep, yep that's right, yeah. So, and uh, we're getting pretty good at our replays, aren't here, aren't we? So he goes 90 right here, watch Albon, he just gets hit from behind, and whoop, boom, so bang. So he's out of the race, a lot of damage, and he gets hit again and again. Jeez, it was a pinball machine. So 
it's just so great that you know, as we know, everyone everyone's okay. Uh, when it goes wrong um, with these boys, and you know, they're the best in the business. But even even they can, you know, it's hard to bail out of really really tricky tricky situations. And um, it's just brilliant that everyone's all right, and we're going to have a restart very soon, and we can go again. That's the interesting one, isn't it, DC? The actual attitude towards turn one again on a restart after having seen uh, incidents. Um, you just got to, not that you're any less aggressive, you just know that uh, you don't want to sit around for 40 minutes again. But boys, let's just get some racing going. Yeah, then we're going to the discipline of the great British crowd, no one getting on the path in the middle. It's, uh, it's the opposite of keep off the grass, isn't it? It's, it's stay on the grass, <laughs> keep off the path. So Lewis Hamilton gained a couple of positions initially. Uh, so the procedure will be they will head out of the pits, they will form up. It is then the discretion of the race director, whether it is a rolling or a standing start. But there is no reason not to have a standing start. So we'd expect to see the lights go on and out again. Interesting, Lewis walking around with his mobile phone. I can't imagine oh. he'd a call scheduled for uh, 15.42, <laughs> whatever the time is today. To update you, if you're joining late, a huge accident involving Joe Guanyu in the opening moments of the British Grand Prix. Alex Albon involved as well. Both of those drivers are conscious and at the medical centre. Joe Guanyu's car flipping over beyond the tyre barrier into the catch fencing at Abbey Turn, the first of this racetrack. Also uh, eliminated George Russell um, in that concertina effect that we had after... Uh, fully committed through that first turn you're really thinking about turn three when you speak to the drivers as everyone watches on with a lot of a lighter mood compared to a, a few minutes ago and we started the formation up at three o'clock we have 42 minutes off the time at the moment we're not going to be losing any laps or anything like that as it stands and we await the word from race control of course they now have to the, the only priority in town was checking that first of all Alex Albon was okay and then Joe Guan Yu extracting him from the car and then getting him to the medical center but now they've got to inspect whether everything's okay with the barrier at the first turn before we can go back racing. Yeah interesting that both the Ferrari drivers have decided to get inside the, the car get the helmet on be sitting in a race car isn't the most comfortable place to hang out so they've committed pretty early to that we haven't even had the announcement as to what the uh, the countdown to the restart procedure will be. It's pretty good, pretty well. That's the news we all wanted. Joe Guan Yu, conscious, no fractures, and then so. Back to our massive expert, yeah. accident expert, Mark yep. Weber here. Um, we can just uh, we can just repeat what we heard there on the team radio. This was given to Valtteri Bottas that uh, Joe Guanyu conscious, no signs of fractures in the medical centre, and he is talking, having had an enormous accident. So, how's he going to get back in the car and switch? Not today, obviously, but going forward, Mark. How do you after flipping over in Valencia and having an enormous accident, or? Flipping over the trees in Le Mans and having an enormous accident, or uh, say Sao Paulo, yep. where you had. No, what's it like when you get strapped back in? Is it just riding a bike once again, or or, yes. or do you for one lap go? Oh, I was lucky that time. No, no, no. Well, I rode horses a little bit when I was young as well, and I used right. to come off those a little bit. And what do we say? Get back on it, mate. So I think that uh, Valencia, the flip there, and then the British Grand Prix was next here, and I won that race. So um, you just have to. Hey, guess what? You got no choice, mate. Suck it up, Buttercup. He's got to come back and get on with it. But I do like how um, Valtteri's engineer is telling the whole 120,000 people here what's what the updates. He's the he's the medical commentator, isn't he? It's going down well. Okay, this is uh, down in the paddock, and we're seeing. Uh, Joe Guanyu's car being returned to Alfa Romeo. That's not going to polish out, is it? So it's going to be, be bits of that that will be carried forward. Um, but the, uh, the chassis and what have you will, will probably be retired at this point. I'm just having just a cover over it. This is outside. This is just inside the uh, paddock gates. The podium uh, the other side there. 
but we're bringing you these these pictures from the paddock of the car being returned after certainly the uh, biggest crash in terms of in terms of worry since Roman Grosjean had his accident in Bahrain in 2020 but the important news the news being relayed by Alex Chan the engineer of Valtteri Bottas there on the radio was that he was conscious and talking and there are no signs of fractures and that from the moment it happened is all we were looking for in terms of the update but you know it has been a remarkable day not for the right reasons because whilst that happened the FIA say that several people uh, attempted to enter the track these people were immediately removed and that matter is now being dealt with by the local authorities that's the update of what has been the update of what is to come is that the race will resume 56 minutes after we started the formation lap so that is the 10 minute warning and we can thankfully all take a big collective sigh of relief and go again for one of the most incredible Grand Prix of the entire year and they will have to jumble the order if the regulation is being followed given the last couple of years we'll wait to see uh, the interpretation of the regulation but our understanding is that we're going back to grid order for the resumption of the race as Lewis Houghton goes off for a quick comfort break I would imagine he hasn't got long before he's going to get strapped back in for the cockpit that is no bigger than than him really and the layers of fireproof overalls the hands device the crash helmet and he will hope an attacking drive so we are counting down on the left hand side and Sergio Perez who was in the top five for the first time in his 11 year Formula One career president of the FIA wandering down the pit lane as well and it is action stations everyone offering now a very very quick uh, jumping two positions if you look at the big boss CEO there moving his way past and there's the birthday boy I knew there'd be a graphic they never miss an opportunity that graphics team yeah it's extraordinary you know that graphic they put a lot of effort into it <laughs> phenomenal so uh, would go down well at a fourth birthday wouldn't it <laughs> but um, anyway bad, bad luck yeah. graphics team <laughs> Mark didn't mean it <laughs> no, it's all good Seb's got a bit of color on his helmet there probably um, I didn't quite get it, but maybe a message to the family or uh, some thank you messages. But um, as young Stroll gets ready too. Uh, he's a man that needs to find a bit of form. So he's got no confidence at all. No. With, with the car. This is a driver who's been on pole in the wet. He was plumbed last yesterday in wet conditions. Yeah, extraordinary, wasn't it? I think um, he's a man trying to find a bit of form too. He's uh, got the fancy dress going. He's on fire, the big fella. Look at that. He's uh, bipartisan in his support, which is good. So. <laughs> Welcome to our brand new feature during the red flag. Mark Webber reviews <laughs> crowd outfits. We've got to that stage of the pause. Thankfully, we're going to get some motor racing in about seven minutes. Um, it's confirmed that George Russell, no matter what his Mercedes team could do, he will not be allowed, as per the regulations, to take the restart, even if they could have fixed the car. So that is, uh, that is his first retirement of the year. And that fantastic points run uh, comes to an end. He had finished in the top five of every race. And we can go downstairs to get another update from Lena Kent. Thanks very much, Alex. Yeah, I've been speaking to some people in Alfa Romeo, and it's fair to say the atmosphere is certainly better. Mark Hines is just leaving as we speak with his bag, heading to the medical centre. As he left, he gave me a thumbs up, though which was good news. Interestingly, Alpha didn't have the same information that we had about the no fractures. Um, so there might be a bit of a disconnect, but a thumbs up from Mark Hines is certainly a good sign. He's taking his clothing over to the medical center, just leaving the paddock now. Okay, six minutes ago. Thank you, Lee, for the update down there. Um, never, never nice when you're using the words medical centre in a Formula One broadcast, but thankfully the update uh, is positive news regarding both Alex Alvin and Joe Guan Yu. And so back into race mode, back in 
to the Grand Prix mindset for the finest drivers in the world. And uh, right now we can hear from the man who won't finish a Grand Prix for the first time this year. George Russell has just been to the media pen. Let's hear from him. George, a dramatic crash at the start of the British Grand Prix. Just explain to us what happened from your perspective. Yeah, firstly, glad to see that Joe's doing OK. Obviously, absolutely horrific incident. Ultimately, we, we took a risk starting on the hard because I made the mistake in qualifying. We were starting out of position and we thought that risk gave us the best opportunity um, later in the race. But there was just no grip whatsoever on this. You know, the hardest compound is cold out there. I got swamped by all the cars. And um, yeah, next thing I know, I got touched. I was in the side of, of Joe and, and that was it. And uh, tell us about um, your discussions with the FIA and why you haven't been able to, to restart the race. Is, is it fair? Well, I mean, I jumped out of the car bit to see if Joe was OK. I saw it was red flag straight away. Yeah, we saw that. Um, and when I came back to the car, I couldn't quite get it started for whatever reason. So I ran back to the team to, to check. I told the marshals to leave the car. And next thing, when I got back, the car was on the back of the flatbed. So. Um, yeah, apparently as soon as you get assistance, you, you can't restart. So it's very frustrating because the car was uh, just had the puncher. Um, and there's no doubt we had the pace to come back to P6 today. Uh, and there's no way of appealing that? Well, we're trying, but they're pretty adamant, the FIA, at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's one of those unique scenarios, I guess. But I don't know. I, I'm not... I can't really think about it at the moment. I know, it's just, I'm sure. It's... In the whole scheme of things, you know, it's, it, I mean, it seems unfair, but as you say, the, the bottom line is that everyone's okay because it is yeah. a horrific crash. Glad to see that you're Thank okay you. as well. Cheers. Thank you. George Russell speaking after his first retirement of the year so far, his British Grand Prix lasting all of 20 seconds. Uh, Williams have said that Alex Albin has gone to a hospital for precautionary checks, but underline that precautionary after he also was uh, hit multiple times at the start of the race but that will be precautionary and uh, regarding the grid order uh, not all the cars had passed the safety car uh, safety car two line before the red flag and so uh, the last confirmed order that the FIA had is the original grid so we will go back to the very start on the restart if that makes sense which I hope it does a fantastic attendance around this Silverstone circuit. The greatest ever attendance around the Silverstone circuit. Barely believable. If you think of the Jim Clark domination years, yeah. Mansell mania 30 years ago, and yet Formula One in its current iteration, the most attended on site. This is the biggest three day sporting event anywhere in the UK. I've got bad news on that one, my friend. He's already taken. The He's crowd are ready for this, though. They're getting up. They've got the good news that uh, Joe Guan Yu is all right and was conscious throughout. And Alex Alban got undergoing precautionary checks. But now we're going to switch. Oh, there's plenty of requests out there. Yep. I don't think a single person has left, mate, which is great, isn't it? Like, why would you? You're in here. It's a full house. Uh, they've gone for an, the tenth run to go and get some. Uh, Lotion motion, bit of a uh, bit of um, uh, beer, and um, they're all <laughs> getting merrier as the day goes on, which is awesome. And there's Adrian Newey still doing his homework. He's still uh, sniffing around the opposition to see if he can find any little secrets that might bolt onto his Red Bull in the uh, upcoming Grand Prix. But uh, getting very close now to a restart, which is brilliant. Yeah, Zach Brown there talking to Greg Maffei, who's a more senior person from Liberty Media, the new owners of Formula One. As we look back, Checo gathering his thoughts ahead of uh, doing it all again. Driver's eye view. Well, I'm just waiting to get the job underway. So back to the original grid because not every car had passed safety car line two, which will be, I believe, on the uh, pit exit the line that they used. Poor old Alice Powell, part of our team today, didn't get back around in time in the W Series race for safety car line one, but it's safety car line two that tells us that we're going to go back to grid order. So what do you do now if you're Ferrari? Do you try, or do you stick with your original plan or do you try and cover off Max Verstappen? I think I'd be inclined to try and cover off Max Verstappen because easier to defend than attack. 
and uh, we just don't know where this racetrack is. I know you, the, uh, the the concern is just how long you can take the soft tyre, or well, the front left start to grain and, and ultimately run out of compound and force you into an early stop, but we're about to find out. It and also, the answer is, they're going with the same again, medium. And Verstappen, no. Verstappen has decided to go medium with the well. medium tyre. So that gamble, which worked, not being taken the second time around. Yeah, very interesting, that. Lewis Hamilton pushed to fifth position. It's a get out of jail free if you are Sergio Perez, because you are now up to fourth, having dropped to six. Um, and for Fernando Alonso, those two places gained are wiped out. Green light at the end of the pit lane. The cars will do one lap of Silverstone Circuit. And we will be back to grid order. So signs for Stappen, Leclerc, then Perez, then Hamilton, and Lando Norris will be your top six. Then it will be Fernando Alonso in seventh, an empty grid slot for George Russell, for Cho Guan Yu as well, in eighth and ninth. And then everyone will resume their original uh, positions on the grid. And we will hopefully get down to the business of. This important race in the Formula One World Championship of 2022, Carlos Sainz, who was denied a maiden victory by Max Verstappen a couple of weeks ago in Montreal. It was less than a second across the line, but he was never able to shape for a move to dart for one for his maiden win. And then he answered those who said maybe he should have made more of that opportunity with a really strong pole position that surprised even him. And as we expected, the safety car will enter the pit lane. The uh, rule book says if you can have a, a standing start, you should. And so let's reset this then for you. The track temperature is 32 degrees. That is comparable with what they had on their Friday long tyre runs. But remember, it rained yesterday to wash away some of that Pirelli rubber from the grip of the racing line. The air temperature is 19 degrees to tick that final box. And now, after a delay of very nearly an hour, it's time for the best drivers in the world to go back once again. The three retirements eliminated at the first turn. Russell, Joe and Albon. Thankfully, everyone is OK. You can see the medical car in the background disappearing down the Wellington Strait. We're about to head with the safety car down to the Hangar Strait. And we'll be moving to the second start of the British Grand Prix. On board with Lewis Hamilton, who has it all to do once again. But when you've made a mighty start, what reason can you have for not making another one? Yep. And we'll have the 11 on the crack, won't he? I think that, um, interesting here that Verstappen has gone on to the medium tyre. Now, he's the one with the least experience because, obviously, uh, he has switched the compounds off the line, so that clutch and sort of throttle control and everything that he'll need, of course, he's a phenomenal starter. We know that, but everyone else around him has a little bit of experience with how they performed off the previous start with the same compound but Max is the, the outlier here in switching into the medium tyre so is, is he backing himself DC do you think he's backing himself to see if he can do Saints apples for apples off the line I think so and also brand new maybe they have another set of brand new of the uh, the soft where a brand new set of the medium will give you a little bit of uh, great point yep. a little bit extra traction so we're about to find out as they make their way to the grid Gasly switched to the soft tyres, Magnussen switched to the mediums, Yuki Tsunoda managed to get the car back to the pits after being caught up in it. They've repaired the car and he has switched to the softs. And the Alpha Tauri, no real pace on the Friday long run, so they're just going all in with gaining positions at the start of this one. OK, it is a different story for the front row here. It's medium tyre versus medium tyre. Max Verstappen, can he get the lead all over again? Will it be a different story? Once again, the final car to slot into position is Lance Stroll. 17 on the grid here at Silverstone right now. Here we go. Medical car into position and we look to the gantry for two, three, four, five red lights. And the second start of the British Grand Prix is go. And it's very, very tight between the top two. Verstappen to the inside. Verstappen this time with the medium tyre. Four cars. 
Carlos Sainz, but Carlos Sainz kept his foot in and keeps the lead. Sergio Perez is trying to dive up to second position. Verstappen keeps the place though. It's Sainz, then it's Verstappen, and trying to go all the way around the outside. Contact. Charles Leclerc is into the side of Sergio Perez. Carlos Sainz maintains the lead. It is Sainz, then Verstappen, then and Leclerc with damage there. He got to the inside and he's fought his way up to third. The two rivals for the championship wheel to wheel. And it was contact with one Red Bull. Might it be contact with another? Charles Leclerc off the road for Stappen, hands on to second place. It's third for Leclerc. And around the outside, looking for the move. Getting the move done is Lando Norris on Lewis Hamilton. Will he brave it to the inside of Cops Corner? One year on, Lando Norris defends. Damage oh, to the debris. wing. Yeah. There's debris off the front wing of Perez there. It's signs for Stappen, Leclerc and Perez at this stage as the two Brits fight it into maggots. And you never even took a breath. That was impressive. Wow, what a start. And whoa, whoa how good was Sainz? You know, one of the most aggressive racers for him to go wheel to wheel with, Max Verstappen. And he held his own. His confidence is there from qualifying. And he had to fight hard to continue to lead this Grand Prix. That's, That's what you were looking for, David. What, two weeks ago, Sainz has learned the lesson. Elbows out, defending aggressively. That could have been the end of the race. That's the race lead right now. Diving to the inside in the blue car is Fernando Alonso. He's racing up against Pierre Gasly. And it's the Alpha Tauri that makes use of those soft tyres up four players places from the start and he moves his way up to seventh on that soft rubber Alonso's on the medium recap what we saw at the start though Sainz and Verstappen brilliant battle but Leclerc was definitely into the side of Perez at turn three well you asked the question to Mark what does a driver do when you have a restart after an incident well we've just seen what they do they go at it hammer and tongs as, like, as if nothing has happened absolutely phenomenal uh, that restart I think the quality of driving also just the precision we saw the two Brits were at it I want to see the replay of those two guys there Norris and Hamilton they'll pull some massive moves on themselves in this corner here Hamilton went around the outside of Brooklyn's and then Norris returned the favor at Luffield I think Perez will have to pit very soon though that front wing looks very 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 dodgy for him at, around this high speed circuit he's going to lose a lot of performance with some understeer in that car but I'm with you DC Carlos stepped it up mate it was a great battle with Max through turn one, and they mean business as everyone else starting to settle in here. But, um, yeah, brilliant start to the British Grand Prix. Yeah. Certainly was. Carlos' race cred has just gone way up, way up in the eyes of Ferrari, way up in the eyes of Max. And uh, that is what he needs needed to do, and he's now got control of this Grand Prix. Okay, big questions all the way through the field. We're looking towards the moves outside of the points at the moment, but the big question for the driver second in the point standing for the World Championship, Perez, and the driver third in the point standing for the World Championship is, do they have damage to the front wings? Because it very much looked like they had damage, but they're not pitting at this stage. They're staying out there. They're learning to live with it, but Perez definitely had damage. How Charles Leclerc still has a front wing after going super tight to the inside of the fourth corner of the racetrack is completely beyond me. Now they're getting into the rhythm of Silverstone. As that was all going on, Max Verstappen had positioned the car to get a great run onto the Wellington straight and would have been shown an elbow by Carlos Sainz. These two started as teammates at Toro Rosso. Hamilton got the momentum for a move at this point. DRS is worth about half a second around this 3.6 mile circuit. Yeah, Perez is definitely driving a wounded car. You can see he's struggling for that front end grip. Mark, you highlighted it. And Lando Norris is going to get himself into position to have a go down hangar straight. Lewis Hamilton will be wise enough to read that and will be thinking, right, I'm going to follow you through. They're both losing a lot of time behind Perez here. They're very quick. Norris and Lewis, and um, here we go, radio, Charles. He's all okay on the car. So we lost the right side end plate, front end end plate, missing five points. Okay, so he's down a little bit of downforce. Uh, Lewis looks very, very competitive, I must say. And here he is behind Lando Norris. Is Norris going to defend into Stowe? He comes across a little bit to defend that. He's going to try something around the outside. Perez has got no front grip at all. He's going to have a look down the inside of Vale. If Perez pits, that's crucial for for these two to release their race. Now Norris has got the attention of Hamilton, so Perez is having to pit with that front wing damage, so that's a tough pill for him to swallow. They're gonna get get their head down and do their own race now, but I tell you what, people at home, watch Hamilton's pace. This DRS is gonna put a lot of pressure on, on Lando and try and get some free air and come into this race. Yeah, he's gonna pass them down into Brooklyn uh, using the Wellington Street. 
he'll be thinking ahead. He'll be thinking, right, I'm going to get him there. And if I don't get him there, I'm going to get him a hanger straight. Lando will be thinking, he's going to try and pass me here. And Lando has been phenomenal in his Formula One career of knowing when to pick the battles. So the Brits side by side on the Wellington straight. But Lando Norris is thinking about later in the Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton is thinking further up the road. The driver who has never been lower than second since 2013 on this famous old circuit. Gives something for the fans to cheer. And he will look to clear the cars ahead. He knows the next one up the road, Charles Leclerc, has end plate damage. And now we're going to get a look at whether the Mercedes update have been brought to the car and this configuration of circuit finally allows a seven-time world champion to compete in Formula One 2022. Car is awesome in the high speed. I think the Merc looks brilliant through there. Look at the gap he pulled on Norris through there just on one lap alone. I know he passed him a bit early in the lap but the gap through there in the high speed I think the Merc's looking very comfortable as he takes a tear off off. Get some free air now. He's going to get his head down and try and claw his way onto the back of the podium here and um, see what he can do about the prancing horse and the Red Bull ahead. The stewards have noted that Verstappen and Leclerc had that incident on the restart lap. We're going to show you that incident on the restart lap. Charles was off the road, but did Max give him room? That's what we'll look at now. How close was it into turn one? Yeah, uh, Sainz did a brilliant job of closing down Verstappen into the, the pit wall. Left enough room, though, so no, no complaints about whether that was unsporting and then you're going to see Leclerc here throwing out the inside of Perez gets it over the curb and there was that little contact and then he must have just clipped the front wing end plate as they went out on to uh, the, the turn before Wellington Strait so on board with the Sappen start was still better but just not enough this time to get it completed so he had to go across the inside curb lifted and that's where Sainz then carried momentum so he thinks right I'll try and go around the outside into the following turn that didn't work I mean, i'm trying to get myself positioned around the outside that didn't work he's running <laughs> out of options yeah. that was robust from the spaniard and good stuff here we are on board with lewis it's a bit cozy for him too watch our charl on the left there slides in there oh, and lewis probably saw that coming as well makes a bit more room there's lando too on the inside lewis gives him room runs around the outside he has to feather the throttle a little bit then here's Sergio, watch, he's going to get some attention from the inside here, watch this, here he comes, boom, in the inside, how are we going? Whoop, oh, yeah, we got was, this, yeah, that was oh, that tough race. Dodge him cars yep. there, wasn't it? It was. Gosh, and he, and the front wing. Look at the front wing already, just on the, on the front flap there, you can see it flicking around, the damage was done. Okay, so uh, they would listed the wrong drivers for the investigation, but uh, no further action taken. Uh, Carlos Sainz leads the British Grand Prix by less than a second, he's being warned for debris at turn 11, which will, you will know better as Maggot's Corner. And that is uh, at a very, very committed part of the racetrack. So if they've noted that, that should be a virtual safety car to clear it off the road. Any idea why it's called Maggot's? <sighs> I've read it years ago, but not off the top of my head after the day that we've had so far. <laughs> Me neither. I just thought that <laughs> with your big encyclopedic brain, you would know because it's an unusual name. It must be something harking back to military times. Yeah, very strange. I think, I think, and uh, do let me know if this is wrong, but I think it's Maggots Moor, which is not too far away from the... And I'm being given a thumbs up from our commentary box producer, Tony Dodgins. So I get to stay, which is great, because it's a phenomenal Grand Prix in progress. And Verstappen going to work now, trying to eat in to the back of the advantage that Carlos Sainz has. And we know he's in tent from what we see. And... Uh, Right, so signs Verstappen last time around, tenth and a half. Charlotte Claire trying to go with a damaged car. Decision for Ferrari about whether they replace the front wing later on. But Verstappen doing what many in the paddock expected him to now. How many times this year have we seen a Ferrari put it on pole? And how many times have we seen Verstappen in race trim eat away at the advantage and take the lead? Yeah, we've got two prancing horses taking on the bull in the middle, the meat in the sandwich, and it does look like at this stage for Stafford, it's quite comfortable to push on, run the risk of uh, getting in dirty air, and uh, taking a bit more out of those tires. Sainz does look comfortable out front though, but he won't be comfortable seeing that gap close down. But I just think that the Ferrari is pretty slippy in a straight line. I know the Red Bull is as well, but there's not a big enough offset to see whether the DRS can really give Verstappen the chance to overtake. Yeah. Well, this is where the new radio... It's a bit quicker. Yeah, he's like, I'm working hard here, boys. I'm working hard, boys and girls, and um, he's still with me. 
trying to get away, but um, also with the... Oh, as he drops the wheel on the exit of Luffield, so that's an indication of Max uh, pushing as hard as he can. As we go on board here, this is into Cops, the corner last year where he went exit stage left there and had a big impact on the first lap. Very measured through there, leaving uh, a little bit of margin. We know that outside curve has damaged cars early, uh, his car in particular, uh, in practice this weekend, so he's working his way through maggots and beckett's right now uh, a bit of understeer as dc points out here in the commentary box and look at this now so this is where the drs he's just sitting here and what happens here also he can recover a little bit more energy here because his top speed is higher so coming from a higher top speed he can actually be a bit tactical with the way he harvests a bit more um, battery power uh, carlos is having to do all the work in front here pushing that wind um, particularly on the straights but uh, in the corners this is where this is Carlos has a bit of an advantage because he's, he's got a lot of clean air on the front of his car where Max is having to work a bit harder in that choppy air so it sort of swings in roundabouts but this is where the new regulations guys as you look at this replay when he does run wide here at Lafayette watch this understand understand gets on the power just goes oh and he would have had you know it's uh a bit, for you and I mate that would have been a bit of a a heart, uh, heart stopping <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> tasting of the, uh, the buttocks as yep. you run to the edge of the curb there. But yeah, Carlos here feeling the need to want to try and disrupt the slipstream. And it's just the nature of this track that although it's a high speed circuit, the actual straights themselves are not that long. So DRS effect isn't going to be as powerful. Yeah, and this is where the new regulations, you know, this is a track where we would hope the new regs you could really get super, super close. I think he is closer than maybe they would have been able to be in the past but it's still not able to pull a move off yet anyway now let's see how the degradation we're in the middle part of the stint of these tires so you know we're going to go on a bit of a journey of car balance and driver confidence at the end of this stint so they're you know they're playing oh he's, oh, he's, he's got, got one, one. That, he's could, one. that could give that the lead yep. to max verstappen carlos is the race leader off the road and max verstappen is through max verstappen takes the lead of the british grand prix after an error from carlos Sainz, who is giving it everything to stay ahead but one moment sees it all come undone and verstappen takes the lead as he chases race win number seven in formula one 2022 Sainz sees it slip through his fingers for the second time today uh, i feel for him it was all going so well and uh, unfortunately at a moment that uh, I had many times in my career <laughs> where you just trying to keep it together like we saw Verstappen do under immense pressure so at the last part of Beckett's he turned in committed and lost the rear end cat like reactions to make sure he didn't spin the car around but in the end well he was fair when he came back on track because he knew Verstappen was going to be carrying speed watch this rear lets go as he turns in and he just had to open the steering and luckily for him a little bit of tarmac runoff there yeah, we were just saying, weren't we? Um, getting into the different phase of the stint, and um, you know, I, I think he might say wind. He might say, you know, there, there was something a bit different from the previous lap. But uh, whatever way you cut it, that was an error uh, that uh, cost him the race lead here. Now, and now he's on the back foot. He's got his teammate with the target on him to try and clear him as well. So Carlos will be lower on confidence too in the high speed. Now, there's no question about it. As a driver, that'll take a few laps to get your confidence back up in this particular part of the circuit because it's high speed and look at Charles he knows he can smell that his teammates lost a bit of confidence in there Max is disappearing down the road and if Charles wants to have to do anything with his victory today he needs to get on with it as well yeah I think uh, Alex that Ferrari will probably give Carlos the message that you know don't hold each other up on this we've got a bigger Bigger picture as you see a battle between the Alpha Tauris. No way no. has that just happened between no. the Alpha Tauris, Yuki Sonoda and Pierre Gasly coming together. Oh, I would not like to be those boys going into a debrief for France Toast. Nice idea, poor execution. Oh, that is, well, we've had one team principal, one old school team principal up here in the Channel 4 commentary box this weekend. Franz Tost occupies the same touchy-feely uh, sort of debrief that Eddie Jordan would dish out. It's going to be loud down there at Alpha Tauri later. Yeah, I would not want to be those two, especially not Yuki, because he's the one that's uh, triggered it. But look, this is uh, this is not, obviously not not a good moment for Carlos Sainz. I've done all the great work in qualifying. He's now got his teammate behind him with uh, a damaged car, missing the uh, front right end plate completely their data telling them that's costing them five points of front downforce 
Um, so that may well be that it's actually helping balance his car today. You know, so uh, if the car's a little bit on the nose, we certainly know Carlos's car is. He almost lost the rear at the last part of Beckett's. This is Charles Leclerc, statistically, his best circuit in terms of podium oh! appearances. Oh! Of what's happened? What's happened to Max Verstappen ahead? Is there a problem for the Red Bull? Yeah. And this season of unreliability looks like there's going to be another incident because going through and getting past is Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen's got a problem. Yeah, my tires are not lovely. No thanks. Well, Max Verstappen comes into the pits and this British Grand Prix takes another twist and we've only had 13 laps. Carlos Sainz goes back into the lead, into the pitch with a suspected puncher comes Max Verstappen. It is a Ferrari 1-2. Sainz making the error, promoted back up there. Hamilton is up to third and Verstappen has it all to do after he reported a suspected puncher. He's going to come out behind uh, Alonso as he filters back onto the racetrack. Carlos Sainz gets another opportunity. Ferrari are one and two with a driver that made a mistake earlier on and a driver who's got a damaged front wing. Now on the radio, Charles Leclerc immediately on the phone saying swap us over. Okay, well, there we are guys. It was, uh, it was all going so swimmingly, wasn't it? Then boom, this race just continues to give. Do not go anywhere at home, troops, because there's uh, there's more. Here we go. So did he run wide here in cops? Oh, he, oh, maybe he did. Now keep an eye on this yeah, left rear. but he's been. He's actually started to lose performance before there. It's tight on him here, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So he's had an issue all the way through there. So he started to back out of it. Yeah. And that's where, if he thinks he's got that slow puncture, then he's headed for the pits. We also need to find out did he actually uh, speed on the entrance of the pit lane because there was uh, all the wheels locked up as he could do nothing and the two Ferraris both with DRS one activated off the Red Bull and the other one acti activated off the Ferrari and which tyre is it that was causing him left the rear. issue? I'm going left rear mate I'm just uh, it looked I'm going for the one in the middle <laughs> but that's not speed? good that that could be an issue for him as well as you will point out mate you know you overshot the entry my god this race she keeps on giving and Leclerc goes purple he's putting pressure on his teammate and guess who else is quick, ladies and gentlemen? The tires, Hamilton. Otherwise, there's something with the car. It's still not good. Oh, I understand, Max. We're looking. Oh, he's nearly lost it again yeah, on the exit of the club. The yeah, Max Verstappen does not have a typical Red Bull in his possession at the moment. So the Ferraris are scrapping. There's one second between them. The Monegas driver, Charles Leclerc, has the fastest lap of the race. He wants Carlos Sainz out of his way out front. But if they're left to race, what could happen? A reminder that Lewis Hamilton, currently sitting in third, is the driver who would pick up the pieces if the Ferraris did come together. But Max Verstappen driving an ailing car. Let's hear from him. Uh, guys, he was chasing his second hat trick of victories today. He was in a prime position. But this year, a new regulation set has pushed both Ferrari and Red Bull to the limit of both design and performance and it seems that Max Verstappen is trying to nurse the car around trying to avoid his first retirement since the Australian Grand Prix the British Grand Prix in recent years is only available in box office there is half a second momentarily between Sainz and Leclerc will Matteo Bonotto get involved okay, Max can confirm it's bodywork damage uh, loss of rear it is not critical, uh, so you are able to continue, but you will have a performance loss. Okay, wow. so the aerodynamic balance, or he's, somehow he's he's lost some. I don't know how that's happened. DC with with the car just structurally might have failed. I don't. He didn't have any contact, did he? At any no. point? No. It's either from underneath the car. He might have damaged some of the uh, underfloor, running wide onto the curbs at uh, Cops, and their uh, well five-second penalty for Sonoda causing that collision. Um, yeah, he'll he'll want to stay out there all day long, won't he? He'll want to be running tonight when they're packing up. He won't want to face France Toast in the debrief. As if it couldn't get worse for Yuki Sonoda. We're on board with Charles Leclerc, who led for so long here last year. Let's hear from Verstappen. I could even emphasize, mate. I'm not losing the car everywhere. You have less rear aerodynamic load, but there's nothing we can do about it. We'll try to correct it at the next stop in terms of balance. But it is yep. not structural, so you are safe to continue. Okay, that's good for him to hear. He knows that there's not suspension or anything that 
could get any worse all of a sudden for him. So it's a constant problem now, which he knows he's going to have to handle for the rest of this race. And when we see Max Verstappen pit for the next time, you'll see them do a huge front wing adjustment uh, to that car to try and balance that car somehow uh, to give him some level of balance. Of course, the grip's gone. There's a big fight here between the two Ferrari guys. Leclerc's looking very, very racy behind his teammates. And uh, this is... Uh, Uncharted waters for these two, isn't it? Out front on their own. Yeah, Ferrari started the season with a 1-2, but the pendulum has very much swung Red Bull's way. They cannot afford anything to go wrong here. Say that looking at a second-place car without an end plate. But here's the problem. Lewis Hamilton's done the fastest lap of the race. If they don't make a decision soon, they're going to be coming under pressure because he's the fastest car. I repeat, Lewis Hamilton is the fastest car on this racetrack as he tries to close down the two Ferraris. And when... Or will Matteo Bonotto get involved? Because Ferrari come under scrutiny for strategy and tactics, and they're racing each other with a seven-time world champion who has not had a sniff of a victory all year long bearing down. Yeah, the decision should have been made two laps ago. You've got to let your fastest car go, and you can sort it out later in the Grand Prix if some if, if the race plays out that they're still 1-2 but right now before you've done your first round of pit stops you've got Hamilton catching you you cannot take the risk of fighting each other this is uh, you know it's an individual sport in the in the names of the drivers but it's a team sport for the victory first of all and science you can see he's does it. yeah science is not wanting to play ball there was a point where I wondered if he was pulling over what do I need to do to feel I mean, I'm, I'm race I will come back to you. Yeah, so they're yeah. having a big conflab on the old uh, Ferrari pit wall because uh, the Silver Arrows is honing in on them and they've got to get Carlos down the road here because there's still a lot of a lot of miles to go in this Grand Prix and whenever you can take an advantage away from Hamilton, you must take it. Uh, as we've got a replay here of him sliding down the inside of Perez. Look how cosy this gets. I mean, that was... There's, there's hit number one. Yep. Wait for, and there we are. There's another one on the way out, and he's still the fastest Ferrari. Watch the front wing on the left here. So just underneath that Oracle sign, see it flapping away there. Boom! There it goes. All light speed. Is that all that left? But anyway, he's had to change that front wing, but it's getting interesting. Oh, there's a front wing end plate damage on Leclerc's car. So quite chunky, quite a big amount of damage there, but still performing very well. It'll be interesting to see what they do at the stop, if anything. I think they'll leave it as it is and crack on. No, and now they're just giving away performance. Hamilton took seven tenths out of Leclerc the last lap around. And this is big picture stuff, Alex. You've got to look at beyond the pit stops. That's where this Grand Prix is going to, you know, don't you only really start to breathe if uh, there's no safety cars and the like. Once you're into that final stint, once you know you're running to the end, the car's getting lighter. But right now, they're just compromising the overall potential of a Ferrari car. What a bizarre situation in the British Grand Prix. Sainz has an undamaged car. He cannot make, match the pace of his teammate, who is ahead in the championship. 20 years ago, that would have been swapped around instantly. That is not how Matteo Bonotto is running the team at the moment. But there was concern from Ferrari that their tyre management, their tyre performance wasn't good enough. Sainz has been told that uh, lap time is target is 32.9. Yeah, but then do something, please. I'm not, I'm not trying to influence my results. I'm just, I can't go faster, guys. Can't be fairer than that, can you? Yep. yep. Beautifully well, said. Beautifully well, lobbied. And a 32.9, mate. Well, that's what they want Carlos to be doing. Well, he's four tenths off that. You know, so there's another chunk of change that Carlos is not delivering what they want him to be doing right now. So I think give him a look. Give him a look at some fresh air and see what Charles can do. Um, and get down the road because, you know, when it comes to the pit stops or it comes to more pressure and when Merck arrive at these key strategy calls, I think the Ferrari need all the margin they can get because they haven't exactly been masterclass when it comes to delivering the pit lane either. Mercedes were very confident about their long run pace, not versus Red Bull, versus Ferrari. If you're wondering, if you're with us for the only time this year, great to have your company. If you're wondering, oh, OK, scrap it out on track. It's called Formula One. It's going to be the pinnacle of motor racing. Ferrari desperately need to take advantage of the problem that Max Verstappen's had because they have absolutely, in the last couple of races, fallen away from both championship battles. At one point, Charles Leclerc led this championship by an enormous margin. Then it's gone the way of Verstappen, who's 40 points up. You've got to take your chances across a 22-race season as the Clare locks up. 
to put it a simpler way though, his signs. It's a good lap, keep, keep pushing. Yeah, our name is on lap times. Yep. To put it a simpler way, David, why would you invite Lewis Hamilton to the party? You would not invite him to a racing party, you'd invite him to any other party <laughs> because he's brilliant fun, but race party, he is, an, you know, he can not race, he, he's such a natural racer, so if he gets onto the back of these Ferraris, he'll be, you know, working his way, uh, trying to get around them. You need to push more, you need to push more, I'm in there, I'm pushing up, okay. The, the, the issue I have with this is not about letting guys race, of course, I, I love racing, but this is about bigger picture. You can sort this out later in the Grand Prix, but right now, this is two teams within the Team Ferrari, and you've got to, if you're going to claw back and take advantage of the issues that Verstappen has, you've got to go with uh, where you believe the biggest chance of points and winning the Grand Prix lies. Max Verstappen has absolutely no pace at all out there. He's doing a 134.9. Last time around, it was a 133.1 for Carlos Sainz, who is holding up his teammate at the moment. But Ferrari allowing them to let them race is the story of the British Grand Prix so far, which was held up for very nearly an hour after a horrible accident at turn one. So Sainz has been told to push. Here yeah, I'll try to keep my eyes after losing race time. Copy. So Leclerc playing ball, being respectful at this stage, but the accident that we had at the start of the race, Alfa Romeo have given us an update on that and said that Joe Guan Yu underwent checks in the medical center. There are no major injuries. He remains under observation in the medical center, but a further, more encouraging update from Alfa Romeo. To take you back to what is happening right now, Lewis Hamilton, who has had to have cameo appearances, just two podiums so far this year, is dreaming of a third, but he's not interested in third or second. Ferrari are dealing him in to the British Grand Prix here. They're trying to be diplomatic and keep the pace out front, but Hamilton knows this is his best chance to win a Grand Prix this year. I'm wondering whether Bonotto's got shares in Netflix, Drive to Survive, because he's just giving us all something that's going to feature in one of their episodes, because uh, Bonotto is uh, playing a very cool head, and uh, you can say a very fair head in terms of allowing his drivers to sort it out on track. Meanwhile, Hamilton's just stealthily Take coming up on the back. To push. Land all up. Ricky, so I think this is going to come to a head, guys, because Carlos cannot drop him. He's been told twice, and we know these radio calls generally about 60 seconds behind when they're aired to us. So I think that Carlos is going to get a phone call very soon, either go quicker <laughs> yeah, or, or stop even. Let's try that. Okay, now it's opening up again. Okay, yeah. there's another change of lead. Our third race leader of the British Grand Prix this year is Charles Leclerc as Carlos Sainz comes into the pits. But have they given Lewis Hamilton a chance of beating these cars? Remember what we saw last year when the Ferrari was quick on one compound tyre and they switched to another totally different situation. This year, the Ferrari's the quicker car, but Hamilton is within striking distance after team orders were not applied. 2.5 stop is good news for Ferrari and Sainz, though. Hard tyres going on, so that does give him the opportunity if he wants to do a one-stop as he tries to get those tyres up to temperature. And uh, rejoins uh, just in front of Norris in the McLaren. So it's going to be interesting to see how quickly they can get those tyres up to speed and whether that is a play to try and do one-stop to the end of this Grand Prix. Yeah, you would probably think so, mate, wouldn't you? Trying to go home from there, which is possible. The warm-up is going to be critical because will Leclerc pit at the end of this lap and try? he's trying to do an overcut now uh, to see if he can jump his teammate with a stop at the end of this lap or will Hamilton react as we got uh, Valtteri? Alfa Romeo number two, Valtteri Bottas coming to a halt. And he's given the team their best points total since they became Alfa Romeo in Formula One. It looks like the finished driver's day two times on pole position around the circuit, but never a winner. And it looks like he will not see the flag in this one either. 2.6 seconds between Hamilton and Charles Leclerc now. Uh, still, so they're in clear air last time, and Hamilton was faster. Just a Leclerc still carrying a little bit of front wing damage. Okay, so just trying to give him a bit of a psychological boost. You're closing in, son. He's been watching that for the last 20 laps. Well, no, so all good, but he knows the reasons why he's closing in not really that interested he knows he's doing it and it's sometimes at two tenths of a time sometimes at three tenths 
She's just grinding away, and this is what this guy does so well. He will just be absolutely phenomenal in his in his lap times. Metronomic at times is Hamilton, and he will need no second introduction, as we've just mentioned so many times here today, to get into this fight with Ferrari. We're now watching with interest Carlos Sainz's outlap and his and his laps after this stop to see where he's going to be sitting in after these two guys that he's directly fighting with uh, will come back out in relation to him. It's that 22 of 52. Lewis Hamilton is 2.2 seconds off the race lead when the Ferrari, when the first call came from Leclerc to swap them over, Lewis Hamilton was five seconds behind the race lead. And there is Valtteri Bottas out of the car on a day to forget for Alfa Romeo. And they, they will uh, start the debrief with one driver as their other continues to be observed in the medical center. So initially it was Sainz versus Verstappen fighting it out and then Charles Leclerc's race could easily have come undone the restart lap when he had contact but now Hamilton with so much success at this racetrack is tearing down on the driver that he passed for the win one year ago Charles Leclerc last year led 49 laps but was beaten at the flag with a move at Pops corner a wide moment for the driver who led the World Championship in the opening races of the year before Max Verstappen took control of it, but Verstappen dealing with a car that is compromised at the moment. He remains in sixth place and is two seconds for the lead of the British Grand Prix. Yeah, long way to go in this race, but this is a fantastic example of people power. Hamilton getting the most out of this Mercedes, some upgrades. Is it the upgrades that have helped? Is it the nature of this racetrack? Is it the fact he's got a large section of it named after him? Whatever it is, this is a impressive display. And meanwhile, uh, Carlos Sainz was able to match the lap time of Leclerc on the hard tire as Nick Hamilton is uh, watching from the garage. Copy. It's amazing when you're on a roll, isn't it? How everything just feels a bit better. Yeah. It's a really, really tight battle for the lead here, even though Carlos is now. Uh, obviously repositioned off the back of that stop, but there's nothing in their splits. It's really tight between the three of them. Will Leclerc elect to pit this lap? He's just trying to overlap him and trying to make sure he can have enough distance on him to cover his teammate and there'll be pressure on the... Still going, still electing to stay out. There's going to be a lot of pressure on his mechanics when he does arrive. Of course, it's the same mechanics that service his teammate only two laps ago, so... They'll do their best, of course, but it's nip and tuck at the moment around the stop when it happens. You wouldn't want to both pit at the same time. Obviously, uh, that would involve Lewis following Charles in. The Mercedes garage is first in pit lane, so... And we need full push, full push. That means coming in next lap. You cannot invite Lewis Hamilton any closer than 1.4 seconds, but that is within the strategic option window. That is within a mighty in-lap and out-lap to get past the Ferrari, and Ferrari have chosen a very, very risky path, but all the while, Carlos Sainz is pushing on with his personal best lap, making use of that fresh rubber on the hards. It can take a while. Now, into the pits comes Max Verstappen, one-time race leader who faded away. Have they been able to make the adjustment there to allow him to try and clear the cars ahead he'd be certainly looking at Alonso and Norris from where he stopped and uh, his teammate you imagine would be uh, compliant as well oh Charles Leclerc make his journey to the pits 24 year old driver from Monaco as you can see Max Verstappen staying out for the time being and Sebastian Vettel on his birthday fancies a pass at this stage cold hard tyres versus a two-time winner in the Aston Martin there and Vettel is able to beat him out for the time being so let's see now further back on the racetrack as Vettel is up to seventh position having been eliminated in Q1 yesterday German driver four-time world champion won on both layouts of the circuit most recently in 2018 Claire now trying to open up that gap, but it's 1.3 seconds. It's only been coming down and down and down. And the driver on his 35th birthday, who won four championships with Red Bull, is leading the most recent Red Bull champion. And Max Verstappen just trying to make the best. These, let's hear from him. 
Oh, no grip. But crucially, the days where it's fallen away, if you can continue to even get a few points, those points could be very, very important by the end of the year. Hamilton is very nearly within a second. Charles Leclerc was told to push and give it everything, and still Hamilton is taking the place. We ride on board with Sebastian Vettel, who used his old mediums to go all the way around the outside, and that becomes the inside line for turn four, the loop that takes you to Aintree, named for our former venue of the British Grand Prix, and then onto the Wellington Strait. And this is the battle for the lead. Now inside of a second. He has to pit, I think, now he's got Saints coming back at him. See, does he head to the pit lane? Yes, he does. And so full push was offered. There was no answer for it. And so they've got to take the strategic option. In comes Ferrari. And here's a sentence we haven't said at all in Formula One 2022. Lewis Hamilton leads in Formula One. And the driver chasing his ninth British Grand Prix victory has worked so hard to get there. Does he have an opportunity? Let's see what the stop time was, 2.8, that will work, that will work for Ferrari. Where is his teammate though? Leclerc restricted at the pit lane speed limit and it means that Sainz is out ahead as Leclerc applies the power. It's Hamilton, Sainz and Leclerc as Leclerc will try and get past. But let's hear from Verstappen at this moment. I don't know why the f*** you fit me on these tyres with damage on the car. I'm driving on, on ice. Fair call from Max. The car is damaged, it's got low downforce, and we're gonna we're gonna bang the, the trickiest tires on for you, mate, just to compound your day for you. So um, that's an interesting decision from Red Bull. I'm sure they've got their reasons for it, but uh, yeah, that um, that's been that's worked okay for Carlos, isn't it? DC, like he he managed to make the hard tire work on the outlaps and cover his teammate, who would have been kept us up to speed by his engineer on Charles's in laps which took you know, he's got a he's got an advantage now let's see what this guy does yeah will Lewis pit yeah the uh, the thing is uh, Leclerc was starting to lose lose no, time copy loose he wants to see out yeah, let's go for it yeah he wants to take this longer on the race but Leclerc the times had just started to swing where Sainz in the last couple of laps was bringing bringing the lap time back whether it would have made the difference had he pitted a couple of laps early or not remains to be seen Lewis Hamilton is being roared around this 3.6 mile racetrack because he was always in a front running team because it took him just six races to win in Formula One when he joined as the GP2 champion. We never saw him perform miracles on tyres with back market teams but Mercedes underlined time and time again that he is mighty at tyre management and every lap he can extend this stint might pay him back later on in the Grand Prix as he tries to attack the Ferraris that are still lined up with signs ahead of Leclerc. Leclerc with damage but after such a tough season for Lewis Hamilton when he's on his longest winless streak in his entire Formula One career Finally, a run at the front, finally a chance to battle. And the projection is coming down and down and down, but he is thinking not of right now. He's thinking of tire performance later on in the race and maybe doing exactly what he did last year, making a late, late move to win. And the worry, the worry that last time around that Ferrari will have because if Hamilton was to sneak this victory, it would not be an easy time down in the paddock for their media briefings later. Hamilton was actually faster last time around. I don't know what happened to the front wing. It's a bit of a pub quiz for Max today, isn't it? He's trying to work out what's going on. That that car has uh, left, the, left the circuit here. It just does not want to operate for it for whatever reason. So sensitive aerodynamically as Tom Cruise looks on there. Uh, and he's his, he's his man. He's a Hamilton fan. He wants Lewis to do well here. I think this is a, a game for the end of the race still, guys. I think Hamilton is definitely going to lose. We know track position now, but he's banking this for later in the Grand Prix to win some tyre consumption, finish the race in the last 10 laps as strong as he can. Also, keep in mind, if there's a safety car at any point, you know, he, he will actually be, of course, he'll, he'll get a, nearly a free stop or, or a, um, a virtual safety car, for example. So he's hanging out there for something different. He's had a lot of tough cards this year against his teammate in terms of being out of luck on those. Is today the day he might strike a bit of fortune with um, 
some regulations coming his way on, on terms of those points. Yeah, he may also be able to avoid that hard tire and go to the soft right at the end with less fuel on board, track more rubber in, and uh, and deliver deliver some big push in Ferrari if they are going to the end on these hards. You know, those tires are going to be exhausted towards the end. That's right. Well, Ocon did 20 laps, mate. You're right on the song. So it, they would have looked at that. Uh, could be possible. So he's giving himself options here, Hamilton. He knows he's behind now on the road if he pits, but he can finish the race in a different manner. And uh, he's going to put some heat on these guys as Leclerc again comes on the back of his teammate. Yeah, so Charles Leclerc is lighting up the timing page at the moment. He is setting faster sector after faster sector. Now he's into the dirty air of his teammate in front. And now it is critical for the Grand Prix. If Ferrari want to win it, they are letting Lewis Hamilton into this race. And they get the same information that you are seeing on the left-hand side, the same information that we are getting in the commentary box. And Ferrari are frozen at this moment in time, trying to keep the peace. Are we fighting? No, not just to know for the time. So we are right on top of the pit window from Hamilton. I didn't actually answer the question, did it? <laughs> Just answer the question. I appreciate you speaking in a foreign language and take my hat off to you for that. But what Charles is asking is, are you going to help me and uh, we take the big picture or am I going to have to pressure a, a pass on Carlos Sainz? I'll tell you what, guys, Hamilton's last lap time was an absolute free cracker. To fight. Free to fight. Free to fight, okay. He's been trying to do that for a while, mate. But anyway, we'll crack on. He, he, Hamilton's last lap time was two tenths. Two tenths, only slower than on, on fresh tyres of the two Ferraris. So he's putting in a phenomenal stint. We've seen Hamilton do this so many times on all the tyres. Weave his magic. Find a way to deliver lap times that defies belief. And he's bringing himself more than into this Grand Prix to challenge it. I mean, getting out of this place tonight, if Hamilton wins, mate, are we going to have some crowd surfing again if he pulls this off? <laughs> well, more than that, if Lewis Hamilton takes his ninth victory at Silverstone, the only driver who's ever won in their home country that many times is Michael Schumacher, but it was split across two venues. So, Hamilton currently with the main straight named after him. He might have every single part of this racetrack if he can carry on, especially here. Esteban Ocon is racing Nicholas Latifi, who's trying to return to the points for the first time uh, this year. The point scorer in Budapest last, but no point scoring finishes this, but a much better run for Nicholas Latifi. He's got Mick Schumacher directly behind him as well, and Latifi is on the medium tyres, having started on the soft. Charles Leclerc is giving it everything he can at the moment. But in Monaco, Carlos Sainz wanted to try something different with strategy and it compromised Target Ferrari. Up, 32 2, otherwise, we swap in the cars. Okay, one more lap. And Lewis Hamilton, last time around, is very much on the pace of Carlos Sainz. But this is every lap that this continues, this is playing into the hands of the eight time winner around here. And Ferrari are potentially overthinking this one. And a further update for you on Joe Guan Yu, who had that horrific accident at the start of the race. He has been released from the medical center in the best, in the, uh, he's been declared fit and released from the medical center. So that is brilliant news. So we're gonna focus on the racing because we are right now past half distance with Ferrari tripping over themselves. So Charles Leclerc might just have to go for the move here. Or is it time to swap them over, which is what he wanted time and time again. And every time you fight, this is playing into Hamilton's hands once again. So target lap time for Sainz is 32-2, otherwise we'll swap. But we are losing time compared to Hamilton. Yep. Is not enough. Carlos has got to let him through now. This is... Understood. This is a charity for Hamilton. Yeah. This is an absolute charity for Lewis. They've got to swap the position there they're, he's trying to have a oh, nibble down his, and this is also killing Leclerc's yeah. race in terms of tyre consumption because yep. Lewis is going to finish yep. the race with fresher tyres whatever what we skin the cat here and, and and Leclerc is losing a lot of grip on these tyres for later on the GP does Carlos end up getting DRS off the car in he's front he's done it now let him go that's that's enough. We are swapping the cars. guys how about a few laps you know what's the expression it, Daily and a dollar short. It's <laughs> taken so long for them to get to that point. Charles Leclerc is up to second place. 
He has been released by his teammate, Carlos Sainz, who complies with team orders. Never an easy situation for a driver to be in, but the erring on the side of caution, trying to give Carlos Sainz the time to lead this race, has brought Lewis Hamilton into battle to win the British Grand Prix. And Charles Leclerc now is not battling his teammate, he's not battling Verstappen. Just like one year ago, he is in a straight fight with the driver who holds the race lead, Lewis Hamilton, for victory. But many, many will go, they did not need to be. Yeah, well, look, they may end up looking incredible if they get a one two at the end of this. Um, but it's it certainly given strategic options to Lewis Hamilton. He's got a beautiful slow-mo as he drives his way around that uh, white line on the wheel cover. This slightly, slightly off-center. I'd have that sorted out. It's the sort of thing that you and you alone notice, DC. We love it. Now, Hamilton continues. 30 laps on that tyre. And if he can eke it further and further and further, he's going to bring himself into play. And this is remarkable. PB in the first sector. He has got the bit between his teeth, ladies and gentlemen. Just not quite enough to get that pit stop and get out in front of Leclerc. But if he did go to the soft, he wouldn't have the warm up issues that the hards are giving, and uh, he'd be able to go out. And literally, let's just try and work out does Hamilton have new? Yeah, he's got a new set of softs available, so he can come out like it's a qualifying lap. And even if he does fall out behind Leclerc, he can hit it like Verstappen did in the last lap of Abu Dhabi and uh, try and get track position. 1987, British driver trying to overtake fastest lap after fastest lap after fastest lap. And in this week of all weeks, how Lewis Hamilton would love to do his best Nigel Mansell impression and get past and get the win. This is in the balance. Two brilliant drivers debating who is going to hold the golden trophy that is awarded to the winner at the end of this. Crucially, Carlos Sainz is only seven tenths of a second away. Mick Schumacher never scored points in Formula One. He is up to 10th place at the moment. Uh, Charles Leclerc sets the fastest lap of the race last time around. It's 18.4 though. Which way will they go? Either way, when Hamilton pits, he's gonna get fresher tires for the end of this Grand Prix. He's gone for softs. We are gonna see qualifying laps at the end of this. And a bit of racing because right now he's going to come out behind Leclerc after his stop. Just a question of whether he can, uh, he can get in front of Sainz. It's going to be going to be difficult for him to do that. So Leclerc, a 31.8, a 1.4 unsafe to him. Okay. Uh, there's a black and white flag for Nicholas Latifi. That's for going beyond track limits too many times for race controls liking. We're on board with Kevin Magnussen, the Danish driver in the Haas, in the points a lot earlier in the season. But it's not gone their way at all in the last couple of races. And especially if you consider... Here's Hamilton. I've got to maintain this place forever, mate. Yeah, copy Lewis. You're doing a great job, though. So let's just keep building this offset. So... Who is that guy? It's Lewis Hamilton coming into the pits. So he was saying, I can't keep this pace forever. Daniel Ricciardo having an anonymous race out of the points at the moment. But it's Lewis Hamilton. All eyes on him at the moment. It's on a set of hearts. And he's gone for the hard tires. And it's not oh, a fast stop either. Stop. Lewis Hamilton will still have a chance. But that was not the moment for Mercedes to produce a 4.3 second stop. And it will give the advantage to Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc goes through, so does Carlos Sainz. Here is Lewis Hamilton, and we are set for a grandstand finish because they didn't go super aggressive to the soft tyre, but he's got much, much fresher hard tyres, and Lewis Hamilton would have been looking for a 2.5-second stop. But in the grand scheme of this year, all he wanted today was a chance to look ahead and fight. He's got the tyres. Now, can he claim his first win since 2021? Warm-up will be challenging. Yeah, good comms again there from Bono just to uh, pass on the experience that that engineer has seen from other cars and drivers commenting on this tyre. So you know, even though Lewis's trophy cabinet's the size of this track, uh, he still needs some tips every now and again. Look at the slow stop though. I think it was the, was the front. I'm not sure it was the front end. It was to get the front jack down. Something they had to wait for. They would get the better angle here. And the rear went down. Da, 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 da. Oh, I don't know. 
It's almost like the Jackman yep. was waiting on seeing the green light coming on the uh, the monitor to know it was safe to release. So he wasn't looking at the front axle. So can he nip away at the lap times? Okay, think about it for later. If uh, Charles gives me the arrest, no way, have it so fast as me. Stop it. <laughs> okay, so he's like, yep, let's, let's create a little Marinello DRS train. Um, Carlos wants to play ball with uh, his teammate now in, in Charles, making sure that he can trigger the DRS behind his teammate when Lewis does arrive, which I think he will. I think he will arrive at some point here. There's definitely a big enough offset and tyres uh, grip. Um, he's going to go hard these next few laps. Hamilton should do some nice PBs here as uh, Lando Norris pits. For the first time, he's done a long stint. Yeah, it's a mighty minutes. stint yep. for Lando Norris. The British driver has had some great performances around this racetrack. It's been as high as fifth, but he is chasing fourth place today. Sergio Perez elevated. He's going for a mana stint on the medium tyre, but he has only run out the medium tyre, has Perez. So he, Lando Norris that is, in the McLaren, exits in fifth at a track that placed their strengths after both cars didn't score in Canada. As a result, the team that were fourth in the Constructors' Championship last year like a smoother track and allows them to run the car in their setup sweet spot. 2.1 seconds between Charles Leclerc trying to win his first Grand Prix since all the way back in Australia on April the 10th, setting a purple sector. That means he's fastest of anyone in the race so far in the middle part of the track. Here's Hamilton on the radio. It's a stop that we slow. As soon as these tyres come in, we will have a good pace. So just get them into the temperature window. Don't try to do that too soon. Otherwise, you will really be at risk. And checking in with the championship leader, Max Verstappen, who held the front of the field position earlier on. But now it's Esteban Ocon. These two tangled when uh, Verstappen was trying to lap him. Brazil cost Max Verstappen a race victory that day, but this is a straight fight, albeit with an ailing car for the Dutch driver, who is a winner around here at Silverstone in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix, when we ran two Grand Prix at Silverstone because of the effects of the pandemic. But now Ocon trying to get back into the points. It's been a strong season in terms of race pace for Esteban Ocon, the driver ninth in the championship standings. And the one-time winner of a Grand Prix is trying to clear Max Verstappen, something that he would have not expected at all at the start of this one. We're just waiting to see Lewis Hamilton's time on the hard tyres. Once he brings them up to temperature, can compete. We're on to the Hamilton straight right now with Esteban Ocon and Max Verstappen. It's the battle for eighth position. Leclerc is doing faster sector after faster sector in the middle part of the racetrack. That's Brooklands, Luffield through Woodcote. Cops corner and then all the way through the fantastic sweep of Maggots and Beckett's as we line up the overtake, which certainly seems possible. The staff will know on days like this, if you can even get one point with a broken car, it can make all the difference at the end. You only need last year to show you how late it can go into the championship. Check your display. We need a uh, for two percent ish from now on. Oh not Carlos Sainz's day it was a maiden pole position yesterday but he is losing time to Charles Leclerc who despite that damage has an amazing chance here to claim his first British Grand Prix victory we're focusing on the closest battle on the racetrack and it is Max Verstappen just trying to eke some more points on a bad day for Red Bull Perez currently in fourth position on 31 lap old hard tires there you can see last lap around with Hamilton finding himself with the tyres up to temperature, seven tenths faster, and there is Esteban Ocon clearing the ailing Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Through he goes, uh, Verstappen will just try and keep those behind him at bay. It's Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen who are trying to chase him down. You just see the flash of white. That is the son of the seven-time world champion, Michael Schumacher, chasing down our current reigning champion. Once again, middle part of the lap. Charles Leclerc is giving it everything to try and extend there. 6.1 seconds, the gap between Leclerc and Hamilton now. This is an easy pass for Ocon. 
Yeah, in the end, Max not trying to over defend that. He doesn't want to give up any points, but ultimately, DRS, there's not much he would have done if he covered off the inside. Then Ocon would have taken advantage and swept around the outside, such as the nature of the uh, corner down at Stowe. Last time around, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton, a 131.5. That will not worry Ferrari at this junction of the race because it's only a tenth faster. But if that Ferrari has the hard tyre degrade and Hamilton can find even more pace, it could yet get far, far more concerning. We go on board with Hamilton trying to do what he's done 103 times, more than anyone in Formula One history trying to win a Grand Prix for the first time this year. It's been the worst run in Formula One for him since 2009, when his team that year got the regulations wrong. That was McLaren. This is Mercedes, a wonderful sound of a race-winning driver attacking maggots and bettles. Carlos Sainz, I think, will want to be uh, smashing those mirrors off his car right now. He, he, this is the last guy you want closing in on you to finish a British Grand Prix. Hamilton on fresh tyres in front of 188 trillion people <laughs> to get on the second step of the podium. I think Leclerc could be safe. Leclerc looks comfortable. He's doing purple sectors. He's got his iron out the front there, and he's looking pretty handy. But Carlos, I think, is in a bit of strife with Hamilton closing in. So that will be interesting. Esteban Ocon cleared Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen suddenly with a second wind with DRS and a chance to get back through. The hurry up being given by the house of Mick Schumacher means that Max Verstappen retakes the place. And those two points could be very, very, very handy come the end of the season. Verstappen back through on a disappointing day for the championship leader. At the moment, Max, oh, a problem for Esteban Ocon and the Alpine has expired. That is why one car with a problem was able to get past another. Hamilton is bearing down on signs, but let's hear from the driver dropping out of the no race. Problem, I can't take it to the corners. Yeah, if he stops there, it'll be a safety car. And oh. Lewis will like a safety car too, kids. Don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah, that'll bring him back into it. But can he, can he sort of uh, kangaroo himself down around Cop's corner and park it up? Not more. The frustration there of a missed opportunity. And oh, that's oh, going to be a safety car. That is an absolute reset of the Grand Prix in prospect. Esteban Ocon has not managed. If he'd gone about 20 metres further, he would have been, He could have pulled into the old pit lane where Formula 3 and Formula 2 are housed this weekend, where David celebrated his two Grand Prix victories, but he didn't. And as a result, the Aston Martin safety car is heading to the circuit and the British Grand Prix will be reset. Hamilton has fresher, hard tyres and a restart coming his way and coming in. Both but, are, oh. both, OK, so in comes Sainz, in comes Hamilton. That's fascinating that they are covering off. Sainz comes in. Charles Leclerc did not come into the pits. So Sainz in with Hamilton. Mark soft, him off. Softs. I'll be asking for softs. Pressure's yeah, on, the, on the stops here too, boys. This is... From what we saw from Ocon as well, absolutely, yeah, it is the soft tyre for Sainz and untested, really. They've all got plenty of soft tyres because it wasn't the fancy tyre unless you were doing a two-stop. But the Alpine breaking down, so there will be no eighth-point scoring finish of the season for Esteban Ocon, uh, who is a retirement in the race along with uh, Gasly, Bottas, and the three eliminated at the first corner, Russell, Joe, and Alex Alban in an extraordinary British Grand Prix so everyone is putting on the soft tyres but they did not bring in Charles Leclerc to do so they did not bring in the race leader so everyone behind reacting but Charles Leclerc is on hard rubber he does have his teammate playing defensive number two as we cycle through uh, guys, are you sure this is the right tyre? No, so no position loss. No position loss, and if you can clear one Ferrari, it's very likely that you're going to be able to clear another. Yeah, this, uh, this is going to be a couple laps of safety car, at least. Because there's no crane that can come out there. They're going to have to take, they're going to push the car, or they're going to have to take a low loader to lift that one up. So. We could be in for a few laps, and then it's just a sprint to the finish. 
Here is Max Verstappen meeting his Red Bull team again, getting a set of soft Peroni boots and back out onto the racetrack, knowing that he's going to try and fight, just closing it all up. No, it could be very bad news for Max Verstappen, who had an advantage, he was trying to fend off the Haas cars. So Nick Schumacher getting involved as well. Okay, Leclerc stayed out there on the hard tyre. He's chasing his first win since Australia. Carlos Sainz is chasing his first win all time. So Sainz and Hamilton behind with New South. That's going to be hard. He's so chilled every time. I'm amazed he's not lost his rag a little bit with he, the team today. Yeah, he's, well, he's a true professional, isn't he? Um, so he, he conveys his feelings, but does it in a way that... Uh, tries to park the emotion but his heart would have sank when he heard they're both in brand new softs so what we really need to try and do is get an update wow quick work from the marshals that was much quicker recovery than i expected so safety car could be in are they going to wait for the uh, the fuel to all bunch up together that could well be the thing we've got leclerc coming through turn one and we've got a whole bunch of stuff vettel and the likes are down at uh, turn nine, so they've got to come all the way around to join the back of the group. In comes Lando Norris, the driver chasing another top five finish in the British Grand Prix. In the lead, McLaren all the way through this weekend. He is in the standings. He is the only driver outside of Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari to stand on a Formula One podium this year. See where he comes out in terms of the train. So that's going to uh, cost him. In that position for to Fernando Alonso. So Alonso moves up to fifth there. There's a, basically a free pit stop for Sergio Perez, who benefited 10 seconds running that long stint on the medium tyre. So he's now fourth. Alonso has gained on Lando Norris, and Vettel and Magnussen are staying out there for the moment to hang on to track position with uh, Vettel, uh, with Verstappen, I should say, on the soft tyre behind. A race that started with an enormous accident at turn one is thankfully with everyone all right then saw carlos Sainz go wheel to wheel there was a scrap between perez and charles leclerc then a mistake by carlos Sainz. saw verstappen in the lead a car problem for him saw the advantage move to ferrari but they played the game of diplomacy they did not swap the cars until late into the race now lewis hamilton has soft cars on his on his car Carlos Sainz has soft tyres on his Ferrari and this is so well poised for the end of the British Grand Prix once again the rule book is being followed lap cars may, na may now overtake the safety car there's Daniel Ricciardo lap cars may overtake lap cars may overtake so he's had no he had no explanation yesterday for why he had a disappointing qualifying session of 14th. He's had no race pace again today. The driver who's making his worst start, Daniel Ricciardo this is, his worst start since 2013 when he was with Toro Rosso. It's not working out at the track where he made his Formula One debut in 2011. Lewis Hamilton was on pole in his very first British Grand Prix back in 2007. We've got two Ferraris ahead of him. He's got Perez now, who is launched back in to the race. Guys, I'm going to be a lot quicker than Charles. Okay. Agree. I think Leclerc's got a lot on here. Uh, and they can't let Carlos just give him a, bit, a little bit of a margin here on the restart, because guess who's behind <laughs> is this guy. So I think that um, Charles is a bit of a sitting duck here, particularly... You know, he can control the restart, absolutely. He's going to let that safety car go. He's, you know, for him now, speed of that safety car is a real problem for him because he's on the hard tyre. He's going to struggle to get the grip he needs right through this section on the restart. Traction out of there, the run down to Wellington Straight. All these little fiddly corners are going to be a bit of a headache for him. So um, I think he's a little bit of a sitting duck. He is phenomenal. We know that. Leclerc will put his elbows out. And, and what about if the Ferraris touch? Is that the only thing we haven't seen today? It is an incredible British Grand Prix once again at the venue that always seems to deliver high drama and moments of motor racing magic. But will it be 
a defying performance on the hard tyres for Charles Leclerc. Will it be a first win in Formula One for Carlos Sainz or will it be a return to form for the home hero Sergio Perez is just hoping that it all kicks off and Fernando Alonso will be mighty on this restart. You can guarantee that. Fernando's here for single race performances. He's just chasing podiums. Alonso last on a podium 13 races ago in Qatar. He's only won since 2013. It's anyone's British Grand Prix. Yeah, gut feeling has got to go with the boys on new tyres. Surely 10 laps. It's going to be very difficult. But that said, the nature of this racetrack, the DRS is less effective than at some others. That's right, mate. But I know I would rather be in position of attacking on fresh tyres and here we go with Carlos. The is to give uh, 10 car lengths to chance and some breathing space. Oh, okay. Within 10, within 10 car lengths. But guys, I'm under pressure from Hamilton. Please, don't ask these things. Please, please, let's say, stop inventing. Stop inventing. Okay. I'm under pressure also. I agree with that. You know, they're trying to manipulate the restart here uh, to give Charles a bit of a lead here. But let, let's just see. Charles is... Where is he going to get on the gas here? Because he's look at him. He's going. He's weaving late. He's worried about the traction on these hard tyres. Oh, Trust me, there's more to lose like that. Carlos Sainz turns down the team's request. Listen to the roar. We're racing once again. The driver in the lead has the hard tyres. The drivers behind all have softs. And there's ten laps to go at Silverstone. As immediately Sergio Perez is trying to put pressure on Lewis Hamilton, who's dreaming of looking ahead. Charles Leclerc leads. Then it's Carlos Sainz. But can Perez make the move at Village Corner? Trying to come back. It's a deep moment for Hamilton, who is on the defence, if not the attack, and trying to go around the outside. You take the wide line. Then it becomes the inside line. Sergio Perez diving to the inside. And the two for He's a side by side. Carlos Sainz takes the lead in the British Grand Prix. Will Charles Leclerc fight back? Perez is up to third place at the wheel to wheel. As Sainz chases his maiden victory in the sport, and it might well be his day. Carlos Sainz retakes the lead of the race that he lost when he was wide at Beckett's corner before. Up to third goes Perez, and Leclerc, just like last year, is going to see his chances of another maiden British Grand Prix victory fade. Sainz is on his way at the moment to win number one in Formula One. Yeah, brilliant restart for Sainz Hamilton. Something looked like it didn't deploy as he went across the start-finish line, and that put him under pressure to Perez, and ultimately he's dropped that place, and Perez now coming on the back of Leclerc, the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix, who was just out there waiting, hoping for a safety car, got one, and now he is on the attack. This is incredible stuff at the moment. The Achilles heel of the Mercedes has been bouncing this year, but they have struggled to generate tyre temperature as well. Hamilton could well come back into this battle, but it's Sainz who waited hardly any corners at all. He made the move at Aintree. They were side by side onto the Wellington Strait and he will be ticking off the laps now. Yeah, here you go with Perez putting the pressure, and then look at the Ferraris ahead as Hamilton goes deep, and that just didn't give him the traction off the corner, and the Ferrari battle ahead is where it was really happening. I think uh, Carlos is well and truly on his way to his first Grand Prix victory, but Perez is the man inspired now. He wants to try and get another position off, off Charles Leclerc in front of him, so... There's a lot to be played out here. Wait till Perez gets DRS. That will be very interesting. That is the next se segment it's of this race. It'll be interesting. Oh, and Hamilton somehow got down the inside of him. Luffield. Live pictures. Here we go again. One year later. Mercedes versus Red Bull to Cops Corner. And Hamilton forces Perez to the defensive line. They make their way through Cops. Hamilton now has the tyres up to temperature. Yeah, breathing space for Leclerc as well. But can Perez stay close enough to activate DRS? If he doesn't, Hamilton will get DRS off him. This is still in the balance for every position on the podium at the moment. Can Hamilton make an early move? Sainz has checked out. Out front, the timing of that safety car. They didn't bring Leclerc in. Sainz made the move early on. There will be questions for Ferrari to answer in terms of strategy, but it's Sainz with a good advantage at this point. Who will be second, though, on a day where Verstappen faltered? Charles Leclerc unable to take full advantage. Another new fastest lap of the race. For Carlos Sainz, who's inching closer to his maiden Grand Prix victory, but it's Hamilton chasing a third podium of the season. Lost that position to Perez, 
on the restart. So DRS enabled now, so Hamilton's going to get it on the Wellington straight, but Sobel Perez have on Leclerc. So here we go. DRS enabled. All right, let's get Leclerc. So Perez being encouraged by Hugh Bird, his engineer, and Hamilton closing in under braking, but not able to get through. And for so long, that Mercedes really oh. good mechanically. The speed he carried into Brooklyn's really impressive. The crowd are roaring. Lewis Hamilton around this lap. The problem is, if you can't get past into Cox, you have to wait single file through the sweepers of Maggots and Beckett's and Chapel. And then there's another chance on the hangar straight. Lap 45 and 52. Hamilton lighting up the timing page. Now Paris is going to have a great run. He's going to have a phenomenal chance to get past. Charles Leclerc and Hamilton will be coming with him as well. Carlos Sainz has an enormous lead in this race, so we're looking for the move to second place. And the Mexican driver dives to the inside. Can Leclerc hang on? No, he, well, he's trying his best to keep his foot to the floor. He's got the inside line, and all the while he does this, he protects his teammates' advantage. Look for Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton's going to get Hamilton. to the inside of both of them. Listen to the roar. Lewis Hamilton mugs them both, and he's up to second position. And can he do anything about Carlos signs behind as Perez tried to get past Leclerc who tumbles off the podium and now there's a battle into village corner Perez retaking second place Hamilton forced off the road magnificent racing at Silverstone because Charles Leclerc fights back and it's wheel to wheel Perez up to second then it's Charles Leclerc Lewis Hamilton trying to fight back against the Ferrari on the hard tires and all the while we watch this magnificent action it's Alonso closing in on Hamilton behind. All the while this goes on, Sainz is checking out out front and it's so close to a multi car battle. Perez has second. Oh, Hamilton, oh, Hamilton, Hamilton back over. Here comes Alonso on board with Fernando Alonso, who's trying to improve up to what is fourth at the moment. Big chop delivered by Charles Leclerc to Lewis Hamilton and it allows Sergio Perez, who was P nowhere a few laps ago, just hoping for a safety car got one and after that after that he has taken advantage of the soft tires Carlos Sainz miles down the hangar straight compared to before as Leclerc tries to make something of his day and it's all fallen apart for the Monagas driver he's only third but Verstappen's in seventh at the moment and he was hoping of taking victory what robust driving corner after corner that was phenomenal man i just wish the people at home could see your hair do at the moment alex <laughs> jokes it's just uh, it's on its end and here we go this is what's under investigation perez running off the circuit there and so did leclerc on the outside so that was racing you yeah, couldn't do anything you gotta let that go yeah actually yeah. hamilton did here we go watch this this is the grandstand seat isn't it Watch yeah. the uh, Red Bull on the right, runs off the circuit there, give each other whoop, and as Leclerc is completely on the outside, so Hamilton, as uh, as you say, Alex, mugged them, and look at him defending on the run down to Turn 1 then. That was a sensational sequence of corners. And all the while that happened, Carlos Sainz says, thank you very much, I'm going to check out you scrap over P2, Perez gets there, and that was mighty, mighty close. We're on board with the Mexican driver as he turned third into second. Yeah, had the confidence on the brakes, launched it down the inside, gave Hamilton a choice, and he had to take the escape road. Meanwhile, he's on the slipstream of Charles Leclerc, who's about to lose a podium. Yeah, I think this is a critical run through Be Beckett's see how close Lewis can be that car is magnificent in the high-speed corner he's got the DRS now now watch this Leclerc will defend to the right is he here he goes round the outside goes Hamilton can he pull it up around the outside of Stowe no he can't he'll reposition more traction out of there all the traction just the road position and he's going to defend again down the inside now Hamilton will mock is he going to go around the outside there no that won't work and it's still it's Charles Leclerc clinging on to the last place on the podium Hamilton trying to score his third of the season. Alonso hoping that these two get stuck into each other in a similar way, and Lando Norris watching behind. Then there's a gap to Verstappen, who continues to have that car problem, would be first points in Formula One for Mick Schumacher in eighth. Vettel knocked out in Q1 yesterday in ninth position at the moment, and has putting two cars there for the moment. But here we go with Lewis Hamilton in the Silver Arrow through Aintree Corner. This is the Wellington straight, named for the Wellington Bombers. Can he try one to the inside now? The Ferrari is tight. Go the long way round, he says. He waits for the outside. 
to become the outside line at Luffield. The old He's got left, it. then right, He's got it. apply the power, and Lewis Hamilton takes his place on the podium. Charles Leclerc tries to fight back, but Hamilton will get there again. Can he stay ahead of the Ferrari as they sweep into Cobb's corner? That's committed! Whoa. No way! Whoa. No way! Has Charles Cannot Leclerc be. done that? Whoa. That is absolutely incredible stuff. Full commitment all the way around the outside. Not at the yet. corner where he lost the race last year. Not Sensational. Here we go. And it might not be done yet because we're onto the hangar straight with Lewis Hamilton with DRS open and he takes back the place. What an extraordinary finish to the British Grand Prix. Hamilton back up to third. Watch Alonso. He's going to have the run on the Ferrari. Leclerc's my hero. Outside of cops. That was incredible. This is absolutely remarkable stuff. We went on board and we were waiting to see whether he would be collected. Full commitment, but it won't pay off for Charles Leclerc, who will question his team tactics. But Ferrari seems set to win this race. There is nothing much between the pace of the two out front. And now, can Charles Leclerc keep these two behind? Because he might very nearly fall into the clutches of Verstappen. The best thing about Ferrari under pressure is Charles Leclerc. That was brilliant, brilliant defensive driving, attacking driving. He's on the hard tyres, they're old. And uh, yeah, you'll not see a finer display. Here's Lewis Hamilton once again fighting for all he is worth. Check, mate, watch this. Round the outside. Can he get higher and get above him? He does there. Leclerc would have seen him and said, mate, I've got to give you that one son and then he ran watch this he gets in the toe lewis is looking at his head he's looking in the left mirror left mirror where is he wait for it here he comes Woo! unbelievable oh. move and breathe Incredible. again millimeter stuff yep around I the outside Hamilton. yep yeah absolutely beautiful an absolute commitment and one of the trickiest corners in formula one and in the end hamilton gets the move done down into store I'm just so happy for the fans, guys. They waited an hour for this race to get going, and look he, at them. Here's Mick Schumacher diving to the inside of Verstappen, who gives him room. He's not able to take the place. Schumacher chasing his first points in Formula One. Saw that chance evaporate in Miami when he clashed with Sebastian Vettel. But now he's looking like the racier driver, something we did not expect today. He's trying to claim seventh place, and his best result in Formula One it's 2.7 seconds out front. Last time around, though, Perez was four tenths of a second faster. He's going to run out of laps at this moment. But Carlos Sainz has had the lead before in this British Grand Prix of 2022, and he's had an error. The wind is gusty out there. This one, don't count any chickens. He's going to go all the way to the flag. Back on the Wellington straight we go, underneath the bridge for Mick Schumacher, and he will be sent the long way around. He's driving cautiously right now. <laughs> yeah. He wants those points more than another argument with Gunter Stein. He does, mate, and if I've ever heard commentators curse, that was it, mate, about Carlos Sainz, mate. You're giving him the, the mockers, but I think he's going to be fine. I think he will go on to clinch his first Formula One Grand Prix victory, and I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it, but here's Mick Schumacher working over time through the high speed corners of the far side of the circuit here can he get a step in, in a position to defend and try and get around the outside with the drs we know he's got an ailing car the dutchman and here we go drs open this is something that mick schumacher would never envisage when he woke up this morning fighting this guy but here he's into stow he's got something no he's only going to make the move if it's his slam dunk and at the moment it is not so he's just going to sit there better to take eighth place and try and improve as he makes his way through his Formula One career. The driver who has done 30 races without a point in Formula One. There are very few others beyond him on the list that have gone that long in Formula One without troubling the scorers. It's awarded all the way down to 10th position in this version of the sport. We're on the penultimate lap of the British Grand Prix. A race that has delivered action from the opening corner but some of the racing there on the restart. Hamilton getting past Perez and Leclerc and then fighting his way back through. Perez, who wasn't part of this battle at all, the safety car. Mr. Van Ockham puts it in the pits, the old pits, the national pits that they're coming up to here. Completely different end of the Grand Prix. But this is what we were dealt.
And once again, we join the Formula 2 champion of 2022, graduated last year with an uncompetitive car, and he finds himself this year with a car capable of points, slipped through his fingers a couple of times this season. Here is your race leader. That's the gap on the hangar straight as he heads to lap 52. And the record book might well say started first, finished first. But if ever a stat told you none of the story, it's that one. Absolutely, mate. I mean, Charles Leclerc was robbed. And he'd done enough today to get the win. But there you go. As you say, safety cars and timings. And swung it back in the favour of the guys that did pit. Went for the fresh tyres. They couldn't stack probably the Ferraris either. That was, that was a curveball for them, trying to both stack around that safety car to one had to take it because Lewis was sitting right on them, creating the pressure around the call for the Ferrari guys. So they had to give the stop to one of their drivers. And it was Carlos. He's gonna, he's on his last tour here and he's gonna have a huge sense of relief. So we've got Sainz on his way to victory number one in Formula One. We've got Schumacher trying to improve up to seventh and score his first points. And we've got Fernando Alonso trying to get up to fourth place. Here's a great chance for Mick Schumacher. How brave is he feeling around the outside of Brooklands? Is this the moment that he's prepared to risk? No, not this time. Danny Sainz! Oh, it's mighty close to contact and they get away with it as Hamilton makes his way through. Carlos Sainz That's not over, though. in the final corners of the Grand Prix now as we're checking on Charles Leclerc who will at least outscore Max Verstappen today but what could have been this has been a race of action and drama and intrigue and at the end the timing of Ocon's Alpine breaking down has decided our winner he got past his teammate it was a mistake earlier on but it was flawless at the finish Carlos Sainz comes round the final corner the Spanish driver will look up and see the checkered flag first Carlos Sainz wins the British Grand Prix to become a winner in Formula One it's absolutely outstanding from him on the restart Perez is second the fastest lap of the race we're set by Lewis Hamilton, who's third, and of course they're still brawling to the finish. It's the British Grand Prix with Schumacher versus Verstappen to the line, and it's Verstappen who hangs on for seventh place, separated over the line by two tenths of a second. What a battle all the way through. The last of the point scorers, Vettel and Magnussen, but it's Carlos Sainz Jr. no more. He's the 112th winner in Formula One, and he took his chance at the 150th attempt. Wow, 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 wow. Vamos. Good job. We did it. Yes, we did it. Yes. Bravo. Vamos. Bravo, Carlos. Well, I've never been speechless before in a Grand Prix, but today, on occasion, came close. Matteo Bonotto's won the race. He's going to have a lot to have to say to his lead driver in the championship, at least at the start of this one. Yeah, I think Charles Leclerc has been faultless this year. Tell me, guys, I'm forgetting something. And um, One mistake in Imola, that's it. Yeah, okay, there you go. And uh, otherwise, I think it's just not been made easy for him. All credit to Carlos Sainz brilliantly uh, handled yesterday in the wet and brilliantly handled today when the opportunity was there i think uh it's lewis that's p3 mate and fastest lap well done hell of a battle there mate really impressive drive that was a tough one guys but great effort we got a sharp enough all around but uh thanks so much for the hard work good points yeah copy lewis yeah well done mate really great drive Well, Lewis Hamilton delighted to claim his third podium of the season and the wing of the Hamilton Museum will now have a minimum of 184 podium trophies in the most extraordinary Formula One career in terms of the stats book Mick Schumacher doesn't have to hear about not scoring points in Formula One anymore took corner by corner gave it everything at the end but he is finally able to call himself a formula one point scorer and in fairly dramatic fashion as well off the road could easily have speared into the side of the championship leader the staffens on 181 perez is in second on 147 but that equation could have changed 
Hamilton getting the fastest lap on the last lap. Let's hear from our newest winner. 30.5 there, last lap, but you try your best for the mega race. Yeah, he can have that. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. And thank you very much for this race. Uh, thank you, Ricky, for all the effort you put in this year. Uh, thank you and the team, of course. Everyone. My first race winning Formula One and with Ferrari is... is you cannot divide how it feels. Running He's beginning the analysis for us. Well, he changed the narrative round on that one. Charles Leclerc will want some answers, but it's straight to the champagne for Carlos Sainz, who beats Perez and Hamilton. They're on 138 points now compared to Verstappen's 181. But it's an elite list. It's something gentlemen you've both experienced getting out of the car as a british grand prix winner it is a huge huge moment and he'll get cheered by the thousands around this racetrack popular driver out of the car and now a race winner in it fantastic performance carlos said yeah a lot of relief there and as he just mentioned silverstone as well ferrari first win and silverstone he's a, a traditional sort of individual and there's his uh, hero, that's what Sergio, but just out of shot, we had Fernando Alonso going up to, to Carlos to congratulate him. Sergio Perez is the driver of the day. There's the driver in third, Lewis Hamilton's 13th podium appearance at his home race. And Matteo Pinotto is already starting, but uh, he knew that he had to have that conversation. What a contrast. Those pitchers don't need any words over the top. And that is the brutal reality of Formula One. Some day it's, sometimes it's your day, others it's not. And the two that battled it out for the Monaco Grand Prix victory now see those positions reversed. Sergio Perez with another podium finish, having the best season of his Formula One career by a country mile. And you are looking at the second Spaniard to win a Formula One Grand Prix. And here is the most important thing that we've seen overall. Stefano Domenicali checking in with Joe Guan Yu. And we were worried in the opening moments of the race for his safety and his health. But he was released from the medical center. A testament to the safety in Formula One. And then what followed, David, was a magnificent motor race. It was indeed. Uh, it's good to see Joe all clear. And Carlos Sainz, the respect there from his fellow competitors. He's uh, a very popular driver in the paddock and uh, what a lovely family the Sainz family are a lot of racing success there but today it's all about Carlos yeah. Nick Hamilton Anthony Hamilton Lewis Hamilton and he will join Jensen Button along with Sergio Perez now our newest winner in Formula One Carlos Sainz who is speaking to the 2009 champion Jensen Button Carlos Sainz, you are a race winner in Formula One. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. I mean, first race win, 150 races later with Ferrari in Silverstone. I cannot ask for more. It's a very special day, a day that I will never forget. A very special weekend in general. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for the support, for the cheers. Luis was on it today, I heard. <laughs> It was uh, one of his days, but uh, we managed to hold on and I'm incredibly happy. It seemed like one of those races that it threw everything at you. It, there were difficult times through it, but you, you stayed strong mentally and you came through at the end. Yeah, it was not easy. I struggled quite a bit with the balance, especially on the first stint with the medium tire. Max was forcing us to push a lot through the high speed. I opened the front left, but uh, even with all that, I stayed uh, believing that uh, it could still happen. I needed to stay in the race like I was trying to and then all of a sudden, the safety car gave me the opportunity to, to get back on it, and yeah, we did it. Uh, you can imagine the, the nerves on that safety car restart, knowing it was my chance and getting it done, and then the win. Well, you missed an epic race behind you. You were just out I heard, front. yeah, there was a lot going on, yeah. Yeah, but um, congratulations. That was a, an epic win. Have you got a message for the crowd here? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, thank, thank all of them, because, you know, Silverstone has been a bit of a special place for me first ever race win here in formula bmw back in 2010 first four position here back in 2010 and 
suddenly 12 years later I achieved exactly the same but in Formula One with Ferrari so it's a special place for me and I thank the whole crowd for for being part of it and, and cheering me on. Excellent, congratulations. Big, big round of applause for this man. Thank you. Checo. Wow, I, I did not see that coming. Congratulations, that was, a, that was a great comeback after a very, very difficult first lap incident. Yeah, it was a great comeback, you know. We, we didn't give up and we, we kept pushing. Then the opportunity came there at the end, and, uh, and we just stood for it. We, it was a great fight with, with Charles, first of all, then with Lewis. Uh, I felt like I had the position, and then <laughs> Lewis was there. It was just an epic final lap, but uh, it was a good, a good fight with, within us. So what happened on lap one? Turn, turn three, there was a bit of contact? Yeah, it was basically just, uh, I just got a squeeze there. Uh, I had no room to go. Charles was in the inside, Max was on the outside, so... Uh, my front wing got damaged pretty badly, so I had to be to, to change it, went to the last place and, and yeah, recover from there. Well, you gave us some of the best racing we've seen, uh, so it was an epic race and uh, congratulations. Thank you, man. Lewis. Uh, I know it must be tough coming away with a P3. It looked like you had a real, a real chance for another home victory. Um, but you put on a, a hell of a show for us. <laughs> well, first, I really have to give it up to this crowd because we've had the biggest show up in history here in the UK. So thank you to everybody for the incredible support. This, we don't see this anywhere around, around the world. This is literally the greatest um, group that we get to see. So I'm so grateful for that. And I gave it everything today. I was chasing, trying to chase down those Ferraris, but they, you know, congratulations to Carlos. Um, they were just too quick today for us. And, and at the end, I was, I was in amongst that battle with uh, Checo. Those guys were just too quick on the straights for me today. But um, I'm so, so grateful for the hard work all the team did to get an upgrade here. We've made a step closer to them, so we've got to keep pushing. I think everyone here really thought you had a massive chance for the victory, your pace when you were chasing down the Ferraris. Um, but it, the, the weakness seemed to be when you were when you had new tyres on the car. It seemed like you struggled to turn them on a little bit. Uh, no, I mean, we lost a little bit of time in the pit stop. And, um, and then I was like chasing and chasing and chasing. But uh, the pace was great on both sets of tyres. And then and at the end there, it was just a little bit difficult. When it, you know, once you get a Red Bull behind you, they're so fast on the straights. So uh, we've, got, we've got some improvements to make. But this is a, this is a huge bonus for us to be on the podium. Um, I, um, I'm glad everyone was safe from the, the big crash at the beginning. Uh, of the day, but um, yeah, thank you to everybody. As I said, for just we're going to continue to push. Let's keep trying to be the best we can and uh, send you all positivity. Well, thanks for putting on a great show for all of us here. Cheers, Lewis. Jensen Button speaking to Lewis Hamilton, Sergio Perez, and our newest winner in Formula One, Carlos Sainz. All of the reaction, the podium, and the analysis coming up after the break. <laughs>
Le passo maxi nel 2020 è un errore là. Sì. No. Ok, Luis, l'ultimo. Sì, è un errore là. Six point eight. Thank you very much. Was crazy last season. I heard you were on it. You guys were playing. Were you guys officially bad? No, you guys are so fast on the train. Acceleration only. Your low speed is. Huh? Your low speed is really. You nearly passed me into seven. Yeah. Oh man. Welcome back to Silverstone, where we have seen an absolutely phenomenal, incredible British Grand Prix, and the top three finishers are about to make their way to the podium, starting with the man who, after 52 laps of this place, went back to the straight that bears his name in third position for another trip to the rostrum this year. His second podium in a row for the Mercedes after a tough season, just his third podium overall. Sergio Perez is having a superb time, second for the fourth time this season. And here's a man who was absolutely fed up of second place. His 12th podium is finally the one that he manages to stand on the top step. And he will hear the Spanish and Italian national anthems. A moment he would have dreamt of his hero Fernando Alonso and how many times did we hear that combination of Spanish and Italian national anthem for his Grand Prix victories and it's not easy when you're the son of a champion in motorsport his father Carlos Sainz senior world rally champion but in the discipline of Formula One the family the family cabinet getting even bigger fantastic moment there for Rico Cardio who is the head of the chassis and performance department at Ferrari he is the team representative and this is a very very Sergio Perez moment brilliant stuff 
Nadine Lewis, who is the chair of the British Marshals Club, presenting the trophy with Checo's dad underneath the podium. It's the first time a marshal has presented a trophy at the British Grand Prix, and we say thanks to each and every one of them for allowing us to go racing. And Lewis Hamilton, for the 13th time, has managed to stand on the podium at his home event. And here we go. This is the real one. This is the one you dream of. The old RAC trophy. Originally given out for horse eventing. Then re-gifted. And it's the best trophy of the entire year. And it belongs to Carlos Sainz, the 112th winner in Formula One history. It was a mistake at the end, but was he going to let his chance go? No, he wasn't. An emphatic way to win your maiden Grand Prix and some of the best racing corner after corner that we have seen in years. Another remarkable, remarkable British Grand Prix wherever in the country you've been watching. Thank you for your company. You have been watching another box office British Grand Prix live on Channel 4. Steve Jones, analyze that.